watch your movies when it's time to play. Watch your tongue down my body, up until my brain. I know you're extra, I don't really like it when it's plain. Girl, lately I've been busy. I saw you find it hard to see me. The boy is trying to get on TV. Poverty's a prison, I'm trying to freak me. I'm not a type of grabbing free peace. From me, Smoochie, I just want to say thank you for watching Global Sunday. Peace. Oh, oh, smooth records. Yeah. Smoochie's the real G. Real G. <laughs> G. Yellow, 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 yellow. Ay, 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 this is just for you. I'm gonna get my glasses on, all right? And I'm just gonna look at you. And I'm just gonna look at you. Look at you straight in the eye and say, Happy Halloween, baby! <laughs> what is up? Welcome to the Global Sunday Show. This is uh, Lungani Koala, AKA Chocolate Kid Leo. It's another day, it's another Sunday. Today we've got someone special. Um, as always, you know, we always have special people in the show. And um, yeah, shout out to all the people that sent me emails, you know, confirming that they're going to be watching today. So amazing. We're going to be talking about really, really, really interesting stuff today. Um, you know, I'm going to be introducing my guests. Sorry, no, not my guests, but my panelists, actually. Oh, my God. I'm so going to get punches for this later on. I call them guests instead of hosts. So yeah, I'm gonna be introducing my host in a few uh, in a, in a few seconds, but um, you know I just want to welcome you guys and say happy Halloween. Although I still do not know what the purpose of Halloween. I'm gonna ask, um, you know, probably after the show, I'm gonna be asking a lot of people what's the purpose of Halloween, and um, you know, probably for fun. I don't know, but yeah, I'll be asking what's the purpose of Halloween. It's so amazing. Um, um, yeah. So. All the way from Arizona, <laughs> Mr. Ken Laden, all the way from Australia, Claire Lamont. All the way from Australia again, Mr. David Pike. All the way from Germany, people tough. Welcome to the Global Sunday Show, my co-host. Please take over. I'm going to be walking away. Go for it, please. Welcome. Welcome to the Global Sunday. Uh, today is October 31st. Indeed, it is Halloween. And um, I know uh, Lungani would love to know what that's about, but he's going to let you tell him. So I won't bore you with my definition of things. Um, I just want to say it's been quite a wonderful week. Um, weather is changing. There's a lot of stuff in the news this week. But um, I want to find out from our panelists, how was your week? Claire, how was your week? Hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, lovely to be a part of this again. I'm really enjoying this. So my week, well, we're coming into summer um, which has been great because it's been a long, cold winter and we've been in lockdown in Melbourne, Australia, for I think the longest time in the whole world. Um, so this week, everybody sort of got out again into beautiful sunshine and um, I spent time with my family, which was great. How about you, David? Up yeah, there I've been in beautiful up in the, Cairns. <laughs> I've been up in the forest. I've been in uh, creeks looking at... Um, um, they call it the Mossman Gorge, and so yeah, it's it's pristine, daintry forests. And I spent a bit of time there on the afternoon. Um, we're wrapping up into the heat of the summer up here. We're just about to start the wet season, and um, I was going to wear a coat for the show. I had to take it off <laughs> without the aircon going. So um, yeah, I've had a, I've had a really good week, and there's there's lots of people out and about now. Port Douglas is thriving. Um, people are coming out more and more to 
festivals and shows and sporting events, weddings, even bar mitzvahs and everything else in between. So um, the country's slowly coming alive and we're just about waiting now for international um, travel, travel to start up as well. well. Oh, and on, on, on the point of Halloween, Halloween um, I know it had some to do with the All Hallows Festival back in the middle, 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 middle age times, times, but, but other people didn't fill in further. further. Hey, how about you? How was your week? Well, thanks for having me. Thank you, Lungani, for your introduction. We always get a beautiful program and it says you can speak in your own language if you want to. So, guten Abend aus Köln. Freut mich wieder hier zu sein. Uh, guten Morgen, Claire. Guten Morgen, David. Guten Abend, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> It's good to be here. And as a matter of fact, yesterday I went to the first event where there was no mask um, necessary to be worn. And it was quite unusual for me. I um, did an interview last week with a clown and already had the privilege to speak with someone without a mask for a couple of hours. So yesterday for the first time there was hundreds of people and everybody <clears throat> without mask. So um, things are changing in Germany too. The famous electro club in Berlin opened its gates and they had a strict limitation and only I think two and a half thousand people were allowed to enter. <laughs> so you can imagine. Um, apart from that, it's one hour Backwards, we have winter time now in Germany. And let's play today's featured video now. And Lungani, what do you have for us? Welcome back to the Global Sunday. We have a special guest this morning, or this afternoon, or the this evening, depending which part of the world you're sitting in, um, Totoko um, from South Africa. So uh, we'd like to very, very warm welcome to you. And I'm going to kick the proceedings off with a quick question. Uh, Totoko, you have dedicated your life to the preservation of knowledge, culture, and the human condition. What early experiences did you have with your elders guided you in that direction? Uh, it, it, it has been a, a very long, slow, slow journey. Uh, it started very early in life. So in, 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 in Africa, we have a tradition of uh, oral, which is called oral heritage, which involves learning poetry in your own language, learning idioms and the concepts of, 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 of history which are, 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 are coded in, in, in idioms. So uh, my interactions with, 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 with the elders has been a, a, a process. Some cover aspects of heritage as, uh, uh, and, and history. Some cover the aspects of, uh, of, uh, of being and an, an initiating the actual training of, of, the, of, the, of the different faculties of, of uh, of ancient uh, uh, knowledges. So I've, I've, I've had a, a series and a number of, uh, of, of, of uh, elders who have been working with me as a, as a, as a young apprentice, as early as uh, 1982, actually. From 1982 going forward, up, up until uh, recently, around 2000s, working with the elders in just, in South African township just tradition craft making, so it's a, it's a variety of, uh, of uh, working with an elder who is a, who is a, who is a master on a specific skill, but uh, working as a, learning as an, as an apprentice with that elder. I had, right. you know, I, I, I've seen your, um, I, I've of course known you and we've had several meetings and conversations. By the way, um, thank you again for the gift you gave me of the uh, Zulu fighting stick. Um, of course, yes. I used it as an old man's walking stick. 
But, um, and everybody, I have to tell you what happened when I went to the airport, all of the people in security, normally they wouldn't let that through because it's a weapon, but I was in my wheelchair holding it and they just laughed and waved me on through. So I was no <laughs> threat with the Zulu fighters. But, but anyway, no, I, I really, really appreciate you. I always, as a child, thought that 80 year olds were the best people in the world. And I love the African tradition. There's so much knowledge, so much wisdom. And I am, I am just grateful to God that as a young child, you were connected with those elders and got that, that spark. Because starting in the early 80s till now, you have brought so much knowledge into the world and preserved it. I, I think that that's wonderful. Um, I'll uh, hand it over to Claire now. Well, no, th lovely, thanks a lot, Ken. And lovely to meet you, Tutuko. It's, it's an honor to actually meet you. It's fantastic. And just before we came on, um, you were talking about um, the tradition of the dolls, making of the dolls and craft and, and how you're teaching young children to make these dolls. Can you tell us a bit about that beautiful? Yeah, we have, we have uh, a, a, a tradition that uh, which, uh, based on the concept of sharing. That when you learn from the elder, you must preserve it and then share to the next generation. So we are at that stage now that uh, past 50 years, we are, I'm also an elder now. So I, I at, 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 that, at this moment, like uh, from two years ago, we launched a project which I, if you, for more details, you could check on Facebook, Ubuntu Art and Craft a, a, a school. So we are teaching crafts in terms of the beadworks, working on working on Zulu bead, and uh, teaching them the concept uh, of, of uh, and and the design, uh, jewelry design, traditional, starting from the traditional, contempt, and also allowing them also uh, the young ones who are dealing with uh, 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 school going kids, children who are about. Uh, 14 to 16 years. In South Africa, they, they are doing around grade 10 to grade 11 and grade 12. Because we feel that if you can give them those skills, which will are uh, 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 handy skills, they will, they will, which more of the craft work, will, will help them to, to, to create work of in, uh, while they're able to mine from their own culture. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a skill it's a skill that we are transferring from the elders to the younger ones, but with an intention to stay, learn how to mine creatively, because the, the culture is very vast and is very rich. So but if you are skilled to, to be able to go there and mine, you can then, then develop new concepts and then trade in the world. That's what they're trying to do with crafts. I also wanted to welcome you and it's a pleasure to to be in touch and also thank you to be able to address you um, as Tutu. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. You, when you mentioned idiom, I, I took that big um, book from the back that is about all the foreign words and I looked it up because mm. there are so many words that are used mm. and, and I'm not very clear on the meaning of them. And that's a beautiful yeah. part of the Global Sunday that I always learn something new and I make new acquaintances and meet new people. And so when you just mentioned you started at the age of two, um, it also makes me think of my grandmother and the things, you know, that one would learn, but we didn't learn a craft. And recently I've been thinking about studying a craft again at my young yes, age yes. of being something above 40 and somebody asked me why i want would want to do that and i think if i would have children which i do not have yet it would be nice. beautiful apart from being a parent to know a craft really well i know several things that i've learned through working in the arts but yes. none of them seems to be as much related to a craft than what I've learned in school, you know, like reading, mathematics, those kinds of things, mm -hmm. but in elementary yes, yes, school. Yes. It's school. more of abstract concepts. 
it's more abstract content yes and so um i was thinking it it would be beautiful to pass on something to the next generation like a real cool. part That's so cool. i'm looking forward to to talking more with you however now let's go to the news and then we will talk more when we come back Welcome to the Global Sunday News. I'm Kenneth Ludden. Um, it is October 31st, 2021. There's a lot going on in the news and in the world today. It is very, very important things. Um, as Iran's nuclear program makes troubling advances, uh, United States President Joe Biden is set to huddle Saturday, yesterday, with the European allies to talk through the strategy as they press for a diplom diplomatic resolution and to plan for the possibility that Iran declines to return to the negotiating table. The meeting with the elders of Germany, France, Britain, known as the E3, comes at a pivotal time as Iran continues to enrich uranium to near weapons grade levels. Biden is trying to revive the 2015 nuclear deal and bring Iran back into compliance with the pact that would have kept the Islamic Republic at least one year away from the potential to field a nuclear weapon. U.S. Uh, secure, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said the meeting with Germany's Angela Merkel, France's Emmanuel Macron, and Britain's Boris Johnson would feature the leaders all singing from the same song sheet on the issue. He called it a study in contrast with the previous administration, the Trump administration, since Iran was one of the areas most found divergent between the previous administration and the Europeans. Now, the UN's automatic atomic watchdog has said Iran is increasingly in violation of the deal known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. Former President Donald Trump withdrew the US from the 2015 nuclear deal and the US has participated indirectly in talks aimed at bringing both Washington and Tehran back to compliance. Those Vienna talks have been on hiatus since June when Iran's president, Ibrahim Raisi, took power. Britain, France, Germany, Russia, China, and the European Union remain part of the deal. The meeting will, uh, took place while the leaders were in Rome at the Group of 20 summit, the first stop in Biden's five-day foreign trip. He also is going to the United Nations United, uh, Climate Conference in Scotland on that trip. Leaders of the world's economic powerhouses gathered also yesterday for the first in-person summit since the coronavirus pandemic. With climate change, COVID-19, economic recovery, and the global minimum corporate tax rate all on the agenda. Biden and the other world leaders endorsed a landmark global agreement on Saturday that seeks to block large corporations from shifting profits and jobs across borders to avoid taxes a showcase win for President Biden, who has found raising corporate tax rates an easier sell with other countries than in his own um, country in the Congress of the United States. The announcement in the opening session of the Group of 20 Summit marked the world's most aggressive attempt yet to stop opportunistic companies like Apple and Bristol-Myers Squibb from sheltering profits in so-called tax havens, where tax rates are low and corporations often maintain little physical presence beyond an official headquarters. It is a deal years in the making, which was pushed over the line by the sustained efforts of Mr. Biden's Treasury Department, even as the president's plans to raise taxes in the United States for new social policy and climate change programs have fallen short. The review is expected, uh, the revenue expected from the international pact is now crucial for Mr. Biden's domestic agenda and an unexpected outcome for the president who has presented himself more as a deal maker at home rather than abroad. As we go forward from here, keep paying attention to this world summit. <coughs> One thing for every nation to be, of course, having its identity, but when nations can come together and cooperate, just like families, neighborhoods, communities, and even citizens in a country, it really makes for a very positive outcome for 
the, the people involved and for the entire world in this case. We'll be back with more news about the COVID um, pandemic, but now we're going to return to our show on the other side of a music video. We'll see you back after the video. Welcome back, everybody, to the Global Sunday. Um, we have a fantastic guest here, and um, I'd like to keep the ball rolling here. So, Tutuko, um, I was just wondering, like, what for you? What's the benefit of engaging with deep culture for for you know the the average person today in this time in in the world? Um, how do you, what are the benefits that you think are the greatest? So the, 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 in terms of the objectives and also going to benefit, one need to take into account the fact that uh, culture is an, is an inherit, inherited property. That uh, it must be, we, we, in Africa, we are of the belief that you play a role in, 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 through inheritance, and then you put your energy so that, uh, uh, and then the next generation is going to benefit from when you, in order to improve it. As you are, as the moment of being a custodian on the culture, your work is to improve it so that when you give it to the next generation, you are sharing something that is of better value than the, the time you inherited. So, so, so that's, there, that's the, so, so I was just going to say, so is there a discussion between an elder and young person um, to sort of, or is there just a way forward? I'm just trying to sort of work out. Do, is, it, 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 has, it has to, it has to have a, a discussion because you're, you're, as also as an elder, if you are an elder and engaging with a young one, the, the concept of interaction allows both uh, the elder and the, and, and the younger person to learn. So that yeah. kind of an interaction, is, it, it, it's there, it must be there. It's not that because you are older than the other one, you say, I know, no, 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 no. You find that the other one is more technical advanced than the, 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 the stuff that you have been practicing for uh, a longer period than them, but they will come up with an alternative. And they're taking into account today the issue of technology. Because yeah. when you have to package culture, culture needs to, it's try, it, culture is, is dynamic. As culture is dynamic, you need now to learn new technology and, and upgrade yourself on a daily basis. Don't be like Ken, man. Ken, Ken, Ken is still believing in the, in the 60s, living in the 60s. So in terms of these technological, it's very te technologically challenged. Because so as an elder, you have to always adapt working with the younger ones, because they, there is always going to be a new technology. So it, yeah. also even in culture. Yeah, yeah. So you want me to say something? <laughs> 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 no, <laughs> no, you can't defend yourself, but you can't, you can't defend yourself. No, <laughs> I, um, I no, uh, technology certainly is a very big uh, thing. Um, the problem, the problem that I have is that my workload is so intense and it takes a long time for me to learn and adapt. And so I, I often have to choose, what do I do? Do I stop doing my work and moving things forward so that I can learn the technology or do I pass the task of the technology to someone who can do it easily so I can do my work? And, and um, you know, it's, it's a constant struggle, absolutely. Um, so I, I do, uh, you know, I, what you say is true. You know, I yeah, but, really have trouble with the but, technology. Yeah, but the shortcut, Ken, the shortcut, Ken, is always to have the younger ones next to you. You give it to them, they learn, and then, and then they, they teach you. Yeah. 
<laughs> so that's the shortcut of learning technology. The kids are always easy. It's very easier with them. So that's why that's yeah. why in in, in in that's why in Africa we work around with kids because well, it's I'm, easier I'm for them to adapt. Normally, I'm surrounded by thousands of children every, at all that's of our it. schools. But in COVID, it's me and my cell phone mm -hmm. and my computer. Don't talk no about kids that. Inside. <laughs> Don't but talk people, about that. COVID is something else. Yeah. So well, we, are, we are under house arrest. Yes, we are, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is your view on this, uh, Pipo? Uh, um, on the original on... question, not on my inability with technology. Um, I lost the thread because I, I thought that was quite interesting and it, it's always interesting also to have a red line, but also, you know, to go around and, you know, see, see a bit what happens. When I read yeah. that you were working on documenting oral history interviews, that, yeah. that made me also um, curious how much that would be connected to the technology because I'm working on yeah. documenting um, some history with people of the, um, you know, born between the 1930s, 50s. So we speak about it. And yeah. uh, an actress, she mentioned that one of the difficulties of the new digital technologies is that most of us work with it without having a clue and most of us who have a job in doing it, they don't even have a clue what they're doing. And so anything that is related to it is often related to huge companies that have a global power, something that is something that happened. It had happened before, you know, with other big companies like in steel or in, in in oil yeah. or in those things, but power always brings in um, questions of how to deal with it. And I, I was stunned when I read your bio, how you were connected to so many different topics. And it's also interesting that you mentioned technology as a thing. So it's um, very yes. interesting, yes. Um, your position. Also, um, yeah. yeah. Sorry, you wanted to say something or... Um, yeah, I... yeah, 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 on, on, on oral history. I, I'm an activist. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a cultural, I'm a culture arts heritage activist. So uh, as an activist, one of the works that I do a lot is uh, lobbying and advocacy in terms of uh, policy and uh, government legislations and uh, going to parliament with writing those uh, 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 advocacy documents to parliament on policy. I also do that work. So in, in, in doing that, that kind of work, we, we noticed in the, in, in, when, we, when we, were, we were writing a white paper in 1998 of arts and culture, which is the policy document for arts and culture uh, to develop the act, the, 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 the legislation, if I could use the, the normal English, to develop the, the legislation on arts and culture. So among others, we noticed that there were gaps on our, on our, on our archives, national archives. Because remember, before 1994, South Africa was still under a different government uh, administrative system, which was, uh, it, it's, it's known in the world as uh, apartheid, which is the separate development. So the majority natives were not part of the South African culture, tradition, or, or even the economy, they were excluded. So from 1994 up till 2020, we are still fine tuning the acts and the legislations that uh, has to transform and, and be inclusive for also to, uh, to, to accommodate the majority. So uh, when we were dealing with the, the, the segments on archives, the national archives, the records and everything, we find that there are so big gaps the, the, the only record that was there of a native person or, a, or an Aboriginal person from the like, uh, people from East Australia. In South Africa, the only record of a native was when you were classified as a criminal. So if there was no case against you in 1910, in 1920, 19, you don't exist. Your community don't exist. The, the only hope that each and every community had to be on record because they were doing something against colonization, 
doing something against uh, uh, certain oppressive uh, legislations. So then you will be on record. So that's why oral history was very important in filling up those gaps to say the majority people, the majority uh, natives or Aboriginal people were here. But now how do we then, then fill up the gaps in terms of uh, segments of history where they are excluded? Because it, the, the, the law or the legislation by then and the government system by then were exclusive. So that's why the oral history plays a part in looking at different stages of, of oral history. We are dealing with a, history, a historical memory of about 400 years in South Africa. So we have elders, we have also practitioners who are able to take us back and then use, and then because of, of filling up the gaps, you start also to, to use that knowledge in, in, in linking up with a, a, a different other fields of science like your, 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 your archeology, span uh, checking the sites and recording the sites where the elders are saying this is an important site. It holds this particular history. Then the technology is used to record archaeology as a, as, a, as a field of studies, also used to search for evidence on, on, on whatever is remaining on, 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 on the soil in the site. And uh, I would say it, it, you, you can't work without technology. But uh, uh, the, 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 the most important thing in this aspect is filling these gaps that were left by the, by the colonial administrative system in South Africa. I would like to um, say something short and then hand on to David. I know he's ready to ask something. I see it on his face. He's like sending it over from one window to the next. But yeah. what you said makes me think of the word uh, of being um, in German is ein Schäfchen. Um, so when you have sheep, you need someone to uh, look after them. And yes. shepherd. shepherd. Yes, and yes, it makes me think of a shepherd who takes care of the sheep, but for those who will, you know, for the family, not for himself, but taking yes. care of them and, 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 and respecting them. Um, I will pass on to David now. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I've been, um, been listening to you very carefully. I'm, I work at a school with Indigenous kids at the moment. Um, and we're doing a unit with them on their oral histories and their, what they call the dream time for the dream time in Aboriginal cultures is the time of creation and, and ancestors going way, way back. And of course, yes. the Aboriginal culture actually came from Africa millions of years ago. Yeah. But so yeah. there, is a, there is a tie with Africa and I, I see a, a similar situation. Um, before the white man came to Australia, there was about 200 languages um, now, because of the, the ravages of disease and, and taking over the things, the Indigenous population is about 2.5% of our population. So all, we have very probably different equation than Africa in the terms of there's very, very few of our um, Indigenous people in comparison to the, the, the migrants and people that have come. And I'm not making, I'm not making a judgment on that. That's, that's just something that happened. But what you're talking about is the similar with the indigenous community here, the, the oral culture has passed down often. And we've had a few um, ling linguistic professors, et cetera, go out and they record elders and they try to um, even try to determine a dictionary to preserve some of these uh, languages. They're certainly not available now, 200 of those dialects or languages because um, elders have passed on, young people got them. Uh, merge with other um, or white cultures and English and that. So when that brings me back to your other point about the use of the technology is obviously something like art being photographed or or, or an el elder being videoed um, yeah. Yeah. talking about their culture is very archival. And um, I think it's extremely important work because it's a bit like uh, our marsupial animals out here. Once, once the habitat is gone and that animal dies, the the diversity of the the fauna disappears. And I yes. think there's a there's a diversity in culture. So we are less of a country when when it, when we when our original indigenous cultures become dissolved because they weren't preserved. And I think um, 
your attitude about using any t- any form of technology is extremely important because if you can video an elder that's getting into their late 80s or 90s who's, who, who can remember the stories, then th- there is a record that can be reviewed again and again and again. And um, the same issue that you're talking about of, of the work that you're obviously doing in Africa and changing laws to preserve this is extremely important for the diversity of the culture. And uh, I often see our young people, we are white teachers, we have a few indigenous teachers, but we are we are bridging the gap with our students who are not used to the white um, culture in, in, in the traditional academic of, you know, the science, the English and those things. That they that they do need to know something about from the modern world, but in but as I'm teaching them, they're um, looking at their history. Um, I can see that there is some disconnect as well. I would like to think that that the elders are sitting around talking to them often about the stories and passing it down. But I, I think that some of the young people that I'm dealing with are missing out. They're not getting they're getting little bits of stories here and there from elders but they're not getting um, as comprehensive. So you really need dedicated elders and people to, to embrace that technology and make a, a passion like you're doing, really, really investigate these, these stories and record them because if it's just left to um, what we call an ad hoc approach where an elder or grandparent will, will try to talk to the grandchildren and a, a few stories here and there, it's not going to be enough. Um, you're making you're making a very targeted effort. So I think I, I commend you on your work. It's very very important. Yeah, Mr. Lovin. Um, you know you remind yeah. me. No, of, no, I, I really appreciate. Go go ahead, Nujuko. No, I'm saying I, I really appreciate uh, 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 what David is talking about, but uh, we need to take into account the fact that. Uh, in any culture need to have content investors. Currently, it's only the entertainment industries that are, are, are producing content. So mm-hmm. you find that uh, the, 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 the digital uh, environment is opening up so many, so much options for content to be to be used. But now if you look at the, at, at, at the value of what is coming, it lacks the content that helps the younger ones in, in, in learning the, 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 the technical skills of what I call it, mining in your own culture. So uh, as David is highlighting that uh, uh, engaging with, with, with uh, uh, native indigenous, uh, indigenous people of, of Australia, especially the young ones, he is of the view that there should be, there is someone, somebody who's an elder who is supposed to be doing, complementing what he's doing at the class. The reality is that uh, in the post-colonial communities, that kind of an elder is not there. It takes a deep cultural awareness to resist the, the dominant uh, uh, culture that, that, has le- that, that was left by the colonial uh, 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 entities over in terms of the religion, spirituality, economy, lifestyle, and also including education. So the colonial impact is deeper in that particular community. You find that, the, 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 and then also which leads to elders neglecting spending time with the young ones because they say, you are supposed to learn everything with your, from your teacher at school. And it, it becomes a serious cultural shock as you are highlighting David, that with a, a child who is uh, from this particular community, getting to spend eight hours or nine hours, 10 hours with a teacher from a different culture. So it's very, it's very complicated. We have gone, we are going through that particular challenge, even in, 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 in South Africa. I, I expect that even the, 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 the Aboriginal people of Australia, the younger ones are, are facing the same, cha- a similar challenge. Yes. And we're, and we're not, we're not um, trained enough to, to, to give the richness that an that elder that does know the culture, we're, we're, we're only um, superficial. We're just looking at it as what we can research ourselves. Uh, whereas an elder that's lived in a community has the stories, uh, has, a, has, a, has a greater depth of that, that cultural knowledge. So there's, there, there needs to be improvement, I think. I, I believe we have met with Uf Denam Shope, on on this program. 
Yes. She's a, she's a storyteller. She's uh, easily accepted in Europe and the Western community than in her, in her own cultural community in South Africa. Because it, 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 we are, we are the, the colonization has taught the native people in, 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 in all the colonial areas to be a, a, a consumers of content from the first world. So when, you, when, the, first, when the first world identifies something unique from the third world, so our cultural practitioners go and trade with that particular skill, but you find it very difficult for them to, to trade with that in their own local communities. Because the local community still believe that the content must come from the Euro European or the first world community. There's, there's a legacy of colonization in culture and traditions, which is very difficult. So that's why there is a need of cultural investment in that particular space that you, you, we need to invest there, create content that says it, 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 you can make it in your own community, then learn and trade with the others. Not start by saying we are teaching you so that you can go and be successful overseas. Currently, cultural uh, uh, practitioners in, in Africa are doing that. And I've also seen that in all communities in the world where there was, we have a, a legacy of colonization. That people tend to train themselves to, to, to acquire skills to trade outside their, their culture, but use their culture as a template to compete with the other practitioners who are coming from the first world class. So when they compete there, they've got this advantage of, uh, of, 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 of their own culture. But uh, when they come back to their own community, they can't trade in their own community because their community still feels that they must uh, consume the work that comes from a, a, a first world countries. You know, it, it's um, earlier on in our conversation, I was reminded of an African proverb that says, until lions develop historians, the tales of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. Um, yeah, well. And uh, this, is, this is something that I became aware of in, in 2004, and it has really yes. stuck with me since. And it's part of why our global decision, Margot Fontaine Academies around the world, is to include indigenous art forms as fine art. Because fine art, the function of fine yeah. art in society is yes. that which propels society forward, not just entertains yes. people, but propels it forward. And, um, and so we, we have completely changed our modeling with that. And uh, a yes. lot of the work that you're doing now, you know, teaching the crafts to the kids is part of our mentality as how we're approaching this education. Um, but you brought up colonialism and this is, it, it leads right into the next question because, you know, in the colonial world, um, cultures blended in a way that eroded them rather than enriched yeah. them. Um, un unlike in the time of Alexander the Great, when he would conquer another culture, he would bring their writers and their actors and their architects and their musicians to everywhere in the realm. So that every time the, the Macedonian empire expanded, it got richer in the cultures of all of those places of origin. Now we tend to strip them and try to make everything be the same. Um, the question is that, so today now we're seeing a resurgence in dedication by individuals to their own native culture and their ancestral history. There's a lot of, of fervor in that. Do you think that at, that is, how, how much of that is just a human need and how much of it is a, re, a reaction to this sort of watering down and making shallow everything? to make it all the same, you know, do we have an instinct for our heritage and culture or must we fight for it because of the influence of this, what you're talking about, the, 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 the kids not being curious, the elders saying, I'll learn it in school, you know, we, this dissolution of, of the continuity, generation to generation, for me is very disturbing. Um, what, yeah. do, what do you think, yeah. what, what are, what's behind all of that? I, I, I think the fundamental principle for colonization is a, it's it's a, it's it's it's, a, it's a, what what we'll call it capitalism. It, it's making profit at, at as much as possible, at uh, and and uh, spend as less as possible. 
So in 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 that kind of a, a, a capitalist uh, a community, you you create a a body of people who are cultural dependent, and then you 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 you, you create a what 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 is called the consumer society. So and and that cultural dependent of the consumer society, I uh, start to set uh, 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 like I also use the word brainwash to believe in a certain principles. So but at the, at the end of the day, is the minority community that are rich enough to be investors in that particular uh, economy who tends to benefit. So culture also uh, uh, plays an important role in that space to say, if you have uh, created a, a 300 tier legacy of a capital community using all means necessary, to, to, to make as much as possible profit out of that particular communities. You are going to uh, uh, not allow uh, communal property. You are not going to allow values that says collectively we can do things without so-and-so uh, benefiting. So that, that, that's, a, that's a, a center of, of the challenge, which if you look at uh, the current situation, as you are saying, how could we look at culture uh, uh, versus the individuals. So if in, in, a, in a capitalist environment, they, you, you, you destroy the communal, you invest it to the individual, and you make the individual to be, a, 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 what, what Karl Marx call it, a factor of production. So as long as I benefit when you are alive, I will make sure that I will keep you as minimum as possible for you to live. But now when you look at, 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 at values that uh, the, the, the indigenous cultures in the world are promoting self-reliance, environmental awareness, worship nature, and also cut down uh, waste. So those basic, if you look at those basic values of the indigenous communities, you know, all, of, all over the world, wherever that community, wherever, even, even, even the, 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 the European communities, they have their homes where they say, this is our land base, this is where we all originate from. If you go to those communities, you will find them practicing the similar uh, belief systems and as uh, their way of life, which is the similar values across the whole world. But as soon as you migrate from one spot to another spot, you try to make a living at the expense of those who are indigenous in that particular community. So that's why I'm saying the value of capitalism tends to distort what is uh, the, the, the belief and the value system of of a of a, a cultural aware community, because a cultural aware community knows the value of collective investment. They know the value of inheritance and passing on to the next generation. So, what we will call today global roaming and all the problems of the first world, you find that most of the solutions are sitting in those communities that are still practicing as per their natural and 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 political correct uh, 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 environment. Because if you, if you have a, a political distorted environment, you have a, a serious class issue. One class wants to be benefit at the expense of the other class. So in terms of the cultural values and your land connection, you will find that if you are connected to that land, honestly, let me, let's take the case of the indigenous people of, uh, of, of America, the red native people of America. If you check their ways, how they do, how they do, it's similar to what the, the people of Hawaii are doing, People of Australia are doing, people of Germany and Russia are doing. So there is a common factor behind that says there is other way. It's not only this commercial profit at all costs, class uh, dominance, cultural uh, 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 use culture as, an, as a weapon of suppressing others because you, you, you are collect, you're feeling that you are collectively superior to others. No, no, no. So basically, I will, I will, I will call, I'm calling for a kind of, a, as I'm saying, the cultural investment. We say, how do we look at content development that looks at, like, like, like you have this program, which is called the, the, the National Geographic Society, where they look at environment, but they look at environment away from the people who are supposed to be living in that environment. So in, 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 in my advocacy, in this group, I'm saying, how do we connect people to that environment? Because National Geographic uh, Society produces beautiful content, but there's no people there. Yeah. 
So how do you how do you connect? And even the one who come from the other community migrated that particular community, how do you help him to relearn and unlearn this uh, different value system that is abusive and destructive in that particular environment? So, Tutuku, when I um, listen to you, um, I think of the incredible knowledge and ability that you have developed from an early age, obviously on from the elders and then going through your education. And, and you use words that in my daily life are heavily influenced by commercial um, a commercial world. And so I'm very careful when you say content because it's used in the in the social media as a it's like it's there's an inflation of words and language has always had a certain power and at the same time a certain limitation because yes, yes. language seems to like video seems to narrow it down so that's why I'm constantly during um, your very interesting comment and also that of our other panelists and the words i have to look them up and i look them up and i try to understand where do they come from and like when you mentioned culture it says something like pflege in german which is care so yeah, yeah. In, in the past yeah. 10 or 15 years i started to look for different words for certain expressions and i i mean i took some notes you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, like, that's good. That's good. There's stuff that makes me think heavy about. Um, we're speaking now in English. This is not my mother tongue, and me uh, too. I have uh, like um, I I I constantly come across misunderstandings, and I hate yeah. misunderstandings. But uh, yeah. I also had to admit that this happens because I think like, hold on, that's what I mean. How can you understand it different? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm also, um, and I wrote down words and sometimes, you know, like investment. This has been a word that's been out there for me. It has become something that is connected with, with money, you know, with making yeah. money, um, yeah. property, same thing. Um, then the question of the I think there's a lot of political strategies also behind how words are used and also the big businesses, they know very well and they have psychologists and scientists that they know which words to use to get to you. And there's manipulation. There's a lot of manipulation and the, the, the oral history, I think it, to my understanding, it uses words to share rather than to manipulate yeah. and i think yes. that's beautiful and <clears throat> i have um, a question when it comes to to this kind of oral history what is your favorite folk tale from zulu culture oh you know whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> did i get you here <laughs> so, you, you, you. There, there is a there is a story of uh, of uh, of uh, creation. If I, if I could use it, like, 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 like the genesis of life. So it's a it's a there are few writers of uh, who have uh, wrote uh, managed to capture it well. One of them is Mazisu uh, Bunene in a book called. Uh, Anthem of the Decades. It's a very long poem with about uh, 86,000 words, uh, 68,000 words, one poem. Yeah, 68,000 words. So, but the gist of the story is uh, when he opens it, he says, and then time was born. So when time was born, the goddess of life, who is the princess of, of, of of the gods, we call her Nomkubuluan. She pitches, she, she submits a pitch to the council of gods and say, we have created life on earth, we have created so much, but we are just missing one being. 
and she explains the, uh, in her pitch this being that this being will have and then they say but in in your pitch you lack these characters so these are different the council of courts they have a, a serious uh, 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 interest to defend so each is looking at her, his or her own value to be when 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 in the moment of creation so but this lady goddess who is beautiful and young she says to them no 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 all that you are are your own interests that you are defending here when you want them want me to include them but this one will have an intellect he may not have a a a, 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 a a feathers keep him warm. He may not have this. This being is not going to all of this, but this being at the end of the day will use the intellect to develop her, him or herself. So that's the beautiful story. It's very long. I can't. I can't narrate the whole of it. But uh, it's it's when the goddess whom we in Africa call her in Egypt they call her Osiris. In the southern atmosphere we call her Nomkulu and in Zulu tradition the one who pitches and produces life on earth and the protector and the provider of balance. It's a long story. I don't want to talk more about details on it. <laughs> Thank you. Love you. Beautiful. David, you're up. I am up and the lights are on. Um, I was just thinking 68,000 words is, um, uh, is that it? Is that been written down somewhere, or it must be? You know, the word count it must be some some document. And um, where can one find that? It is it, called Anthem of the Decades. Anthem okay. of the Decades. It is. It, it the book is available on uh, on, uh, on 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 uh, on online. Okay. Uh, it's out of print. It's out of print. Oh, oh, you also may be able to get the, also even the the, the, the the online version, which is the soft copy version. And is it um, the of the TV. Is it in Zulu or is it in what language? It is, it's uh, translated in English and uh, also in German, in Russian, in in uh, China. About 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 fifteen other languages. Okay, um, but it is originally written in Zulu. I've got lots of questions. Has someone made a podcast of it yet? Oh. I'm sorry, I, I have to go and go and look up this book. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, this is too interesting. I mean, David, yeah. just, do, you, do you want to join me? I mean, do you want to yeah. write this is the libretto we've been looking for, David? I think, libretto. I, think, I, think, I think someone should make a podcast as well if it's not um, disrespectful. Um, but basically... I, I spent some time on the island of Nauru and I got to hear their creation stories as well. Not 68,000 words, I might add, and yours is very, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is a very beautiful account. But um, thinking, thinking about other religions as well, other uh, yes. world practices, the Tibetan monks and, and all sorts of Hinduism going back more than 7,000 years BC, etc. So... Yeah. Uh, and Aboriginal culture itself, that we talked about the dream time before, even 65,000 years ago plus. Yes. Um, so this information, what you've just said, I mean, I've, I've lived on this planet more than 50 years. I haven't, I've been to Africa about four times, and I've never heard about this, yes. uh, never heard about this story. So either I've got my head in the sand, or as you said, the, the publishers, the big yeah. publishers are selling the entertainment. They're not selling, they're not pushing yes. for um, this to be known. So it's wonderful that um, for you to reveal that because if there is a, a version of it or a podcast, I know people and myself <laughs> will have a look um, because the the colonisation that we're talking about is a, is, is a, and it's very much, I know it's happened in South Africa and I, I get the feeling and, of what's happened there, but um, with the apartheid years and all that, but in Australia, we've we've got a we've got a very um, a, a long history of decimation of our indigenous. Yeah. As I said, they only represent two point five percent of our current population, um, and their stories struggling the same way to for people to record it, and that, they're very beautiful. Um, it's all positive. It's all beautiful thing. It's not. It's not. A darkness 
um, it's, it's, it's a, the Aboriginal culture before the white person came was about sharing, sharing. That's the problem yeah. is that they're such a sharing culture. They're so collaborative in general that um, this idea of, of fencing off a piece of land, uh, the white person's idea of you fence off a piece yeah. of land and you, and you own it, whereas the Aboriginal people, all their spiritual ancestry is goes back to the land. And so, so, the, so, so the land belongs to everybody. And, yes. and even, even if I make that statement, it, I think you understand it straight away inherently, but probably 98% of the people that live in this country, Australia, don't understand what this means. What does it mean yes. to say that um, we don't own the land, we are off the land? Um, yes. we, we think that we have to put a fence around it. So um, the, the, dominant, the domination of the Western first world cultures is, is all pervasive. And I just want to make a quick comment that I feel a bit sad. We've had some beautiful hip hop artists and there's many coming out of Africa at the moment. Um, many, of course, from America and it's the hip hop movements around the world. But one thing that's quite, that saddens me a little is not that the hip hop exists and, and it's, it's, it's something that people are using, but my, my young people, uh, very geared into into this kind of music yes. because because there's nothing of the village or the um, the local place that they are from to take its place. It, they're listening. They're listening because the big the big record companies are pushing this onto the radio and on, onto the internet. And I hear them listening to um, so that there's an identity problem. The, the, yeah. our young people are black and they're, they're relating to, to black peoples around the world and hip hop is, is one of the, the, the common denominator perhaps in, in, in the music form but yes. they're listening to particularly a lot of American um, type of hip hop and these are young people who haven't formed their own social, their own social or cultural identity yet and, and, and what I see there is that they're they're um, they're trying to mimic maybe a culture of of, of uh, Afro American type cultures or Hispanic cultures, um, and that there's very little of the Indigenous Australian culture in the content. There's more and more are slowly coming through. But do you find that that um, there's a, there's an identity crisis? You were talking, you know, not not only with the the white. And first world um, ideologies and things, but also that, that there's like a like around the world that, that maybe, and I'm using hip hop as an example, that young people are identifying and they're not thinking African, they're thinking more perhaps American. Yeah. Yes, yes. I, I understand, David, what you're talking about. And uh, it's a reality, as I'm saying, it, it, it's uh, currently, it, it, if you look at the content producers, in terms of the entertainment industry, which is like your your, your films and the music and the uh, byproduct of culture of culture, the dominant it's it's still the America, followed Britain. After Britain, you had very interesting Australia. Mm. Australia is never in South in South Africa is the third uh, 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 dump. I would say commercial dumper of content. Mm. Then the, the fourth one will be Canada in terms of uh, commercial dumping of content. So you, if, if all platforms are, are, are dominated by these four content producers, what do we expect the young ones to do? They have to assimilate. And there is a similar situation in South Africa, in Congo DRC, I've been to Congo DRC, I've been to Malawi, Tanzania, the world of Southern Africa is, is facing the similar situation that you are highlighting there. That's the uh, the, the, the the natives, uh, 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 black people of, of 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 the world, will look at the content that is being produced by the American uh, uh, record companies mm. as the ideal uh, uh, lifestyle. And uh, uh, but what is unfortunate at the moment is that. That con in the recent from 1985 up till today, the 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 the, the music has become a, what 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 I call the techno music. There is no playing of instrument. Mm. Because if 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 uh, if, the, if if before 1985, young ones will learn and assimilate 
and uh, try to, 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 to play a guitar, like an American guitarist or a pop musician from Europe. But at the end of the day, because the, the local community wants to enjoy your music, you find themselves being uh, forced by the local community to play the local sound. Mm -hmm. So you find that as they are young, they would, they would be imitating the what is the dominant on the media. But as they become stable post 25 years to 35 years in that next 10 year decade, they will be now being reconnected, find themselves being reconnected to their cultural identity through an instrument. Because uh, when they want to go for a marriage, go for a certain cultural rituals and events, the local community will say, no, we, we know we, we play good music like the American or whatever, but now we want to dance to our traditional sound. Mm. So you find that, that as he's growing to a 35, 40, 55 years, he needs to have a stable income and family. So he then now the skills that he have learned assimilating to American culture through the instrument, he, he or she turns around now and contribute to, to his or, or own development of his culture. That has been the experience before. But post to the techno electronic age music, it's very difficult for them to pass 35 years. Mm. And they become so good as, as, as uh, in terms of of the spoken world, making beats through their computers. But you had the eight, that lasts only less than five years. You produce one hit, the radio stations play all that music. Because you sound like an American musician, you know, a hip hop artist there, but they can't sustain a next, a next uh, a full CD. Mm -hmm. So that's, another, that's a challenge, which is there in terms of their cultural assimilation. But as they assimilate, they can then, they, but the, an instrument helps. That's why in, in our, 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 our formal programs, even when they are still at the age of uh, assimilating with Americans, British, Australians, or any other cultural communities advanced, that they feel that they are, it's advanced than them. We give them an instrument and get the mentor to, to teach them to play the instrument. Because we know that it, uh, in a few years you'll, you'll be bored but your own community will be demanding a service from you. Mm. So but now the techno music, the beats that they make there, most of them are not coping. So that's when the drugs and the, and the, and the abuse of, of, of illegal drugs tends to come and destroy them. Most mm. of them, they don't survive a, 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 a age of death. That's a danger of, of that kind of, uh, of consuming content from mm. the content producers, uh, record companies that are pushing it, are, are pushing it at all costs. And that's the thing that which happens in this in, in, in the minds of the youth, because they all think that if I, I can uh, rap like uh, like this kind of a guy, and uh, do rhymes as quick as him or her, I can make it. Mm. But I guarantee you, only one track, three, four, five tracks are not there, so mm. it, they can't produce anything more. But if you learn yeah. to play the instrument, you learn the traditions, you to interpret even the commercial commercial uh, uh, work that uh, uh, is dominant at that time. But but if you are doing this an instrument, you are sitting with a better opportunity than the others. Mm. That should be yeah, my exactly. submission to the environment. To say even in Australia, even wherever in the world, it it it, it starts for people to the the or call it the cultural awareness. Start when you discover that your community needs your talent. Mm. But, if, but if you can then then provide in that community, you become a social outcast. There's a reality about the content which comes from US. It makes them to be aware that there is a, a, a commercial value in what you are doing, but you can't do it like, like American kids. They are they grown up in that culture. You can't play mm. basketball like them. It's their culture. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Over to you, Ken. Uh, you broke up there, David. Oh, I just said over to you. Okay. Well, we're um, I'm I'm going to uh, uh, go into the uh, COVID news now, or do our second news segment before we return to this fascinating and very very important conversation. Um, you know, the Global Sunday is 
something that is a mouthpiece for very, very important topics and, and, and actually the discussion of what really happens in a particular field, in a particular avenue of pursuit, the actuality of it. And I'm, I'm delighted. Today's um, uh, show is fascinating. Natuko, I am so glad to be sitting with you again, even though it's in a Zoom room. But um, I'm going to now turn to our second news segment on the COVID pandemic. And again, we are going to start with looking at the G20, the Group of 20 Summit. From the opening moments in, in the Group of 20 yesterday, the leaders of the world's largest economies wanted to send a strong message about ending the corona pandemic. During an unconventional group photograph, they were joined on the dais by doctors in white coats and first responders from the Italian Red Cross. The G20 meeting is happening in Rome, in Italy. Um, in his remarks opening the meeting, the first gathering in person for the group since the pandemic struck, Prime Minister Mario Draghi of Italy pointed to the stark disparity in access to vaccines between richer and poorer countries. But as the leaders gathered to discuss plans to protect against future pandemics, health experts and activists expressed concerns that the world's richest nations are still not doing enough to help people in poor nations to survive our current pandemic. While wealthy nations are offering people third vaccine doses and increasingly inoculating children, poor countries have administered an estimated four doses per 100 people, according to the WHO. That is only 4%. Uh, President Biden said in June that the United States would buy 500 million Pfizer-BioNTech coronavirus vaccine doses for poor nations. He followed up in September by announcing an additional 500 million Pfizer doses, along with the promise of an additional $750 million for vaccine distribution. Roughly half of it though, half of it through a nonprofit involved in global vaccinations. So this is a very important moment in the history of this pandemic. Now turning our focus to Russia, yeah, also yesterday, Russia reported a record number of new coronavirus infections as authorities hope to stem the rising contagion by keeping most people off work for the next week. The government's coronavirus task force reported 40,251 new infections in just 24 hours, exceeding the previous record of 40,096 reported this past Thursday. It said that 1,160 people died of the virus over the past day, three fewer than the recorded set, a day, the record set the day before. That brought Russia's official COVID-19 death count to 237,380, by far the largest in Europe. More than 8.47 million infections have been recorded in Russia. Uh, um, the 146 million globally in the pandemic. Okay, the task force counts only deaths directly caused by the virus. The state statistics service, Rostat, which counts COVID-19 deaths by wider criteria, released figures Friday indicating a much higher toll. Rostat counted 44,265 deaths in September caused directly by the virus or in which it was a contributing cause or of patients believed to have been infected. That would bring Russia's pandemic long death toll to about 461,000 as of the end of September, nearly twice the task force's count. Authorities have blamed soaring infections and deaths on Russia's lagging pace of vaccines, about 51 million Russians only, which is about one third of the country people were fully vaccinated as of yesterday. Russia was the first country in the world to authorize coronavirus vaccine in August of 2020 and proudly named the shot Sput 5 to showcase the country's scientific edge. But the vaccination campaign was stalled amid widespread public skepticism blamed on conflicting signals from authorities, something we know all too well. Climate activists 
Latan Lagi Saru has been watching COVID-19 cases numbers rise in the UK ahead of the UN climate conference, which begins today, and it scares him, even though he has been vaccinated and is only 29 years old. But the campaigner from the Pacific Islands Climate Action Network is determined to travel from his home on Fiji to Scotland to bring attention to the plight of island nations being battered by climate change. This is a scary time to be traveling, he said, but I'm putting my health at risk to make sure Pacific Island states are heard. Despite concerns of some of the delegates from around the world, the British government decided to hold an in-person conference, arguing that world leaders must act now to prevent catastrophic global warming and that they will be more effective if they can talk face to face. The meeting was originally scheduled to be held last year, but was postponed. And in our final report, a memorial service for Colin Powell, the retired Army General and former Secretary of State who died this past Monday will be held on November 5th at the Washington National Cathedral. There will be limited seating and it will be by invitation only. Powell died of complications from COVID-19 at the age of 84. He had been vaccinated, but his family said his immune system had been compromised by multiple my myeloma, a blood cancer for which he has been undergoing treatment. The retired army general was widely praised as a pathfind, a pathbreaker, having been the first black person to serve as the US Secretary of State and as the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He spent 35 years in uniform and the story of his rise to prominence as a soldier and a diplomat was a historic example to minorities worldwide. He joined President George W. Bush administration in 2001 as Secretary of State. Powell's tenure was marred by his February 2003 UN address in which he cited faulty information to claim that Iraq's Saddam Hussein had secretly stashed weapons of mass destruction. Such weapons never materialized, and though the Iraqi leader was removed, the war devolved into years of military and humanitarian losses. It is important to remember that when Colin Powell made that address to the United Nations, it was based on information that was gathered by various um, intelligence agencies in the United States. The information itself was wrong and it had been politically leaned to make a case to support a personally motivated war by the new president. This should not tarnish Colin Powell's record of service and also his achievements in terms of minorities. This is one of the losses of the millions of losses worldwide, each one tragic. But when somebody who is a, an icon, who is a leader, who is an international figure who is recognized, suffers something like this, it really carries information. Make sure that we all learn from all of these things going on in the pandemic as it evolves. They have just authorized booster doses in the United States. They've also just authorized efficacy of the vaccine for children five years old and older. But this does not change the fact that we are facing something that is itself evolving. And in the last week, there is now not just the Delta variant, but the variant that is called Delta Plus. And it is proving so far to be 15% more infectious than the previous Delta variant, which was 200% more infectious than the original virus. So long as people do not get back vaccinated, so long as there are large areas where the disease is allowed to spread, it will continue to evolve. Now, we must all hold the nations accountable for their promises to make vaccines available to the, the poorer nations. If there is anything you can do where you are to help people get vaccinated, it is something that would help everybody on the planet.
And now we're going to go to a fe featured music video. And then we're going to return to Nutuko for our incredible conversation about cultural heritage and his work in the world. I'm Kenneth Lydon reporting for the Global Sunday News. Welcome back to the Global Sunday. Um, we have a wonderful group of people with us today. We have Tatuku from um, South Africa. We've been speaking quite a lot about um, his work in uh, preserving the culture and also educating people of um, the oral traditions of South Africa. Um, I have a question to, to keep us going forward. Uh, Tatuko, scientifically, it's been shown over and over that mass production of common products, meaning food, clothing, education, entertainment, it actually weakens the products and causes wide ranging ill effects in natural systems. How does retaining the ancient wisdom and practices alleviate this effect? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a stock breeder, traditional stock, livestock breeder. So if, if, you, if, you, if you have a bull and use it and overuse it in breeding, and in a second generation, you're able to see the impact of, in terms of the, of the genetic quality of your livestock. So I, 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 I'm of the view that it's the similar situation if you are dealing with a, a pro, a, a working on a production line. If you overproduce a product, in terms of the demand at the end of the day, it, basic economic theory says the, you must work according to the, the, the demand and supply. Work, try to work around the equilibrium, the, a, a, a level where in the, the, the price is good enough for you to distribute what is needed, not oversupply it. But if you start to oversupply, you affect now, one, the price. The price is going to, if we have an oversupply of the same product, the price is going to drop. That is a simple economic theory. So that's the, also the, 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 the similar situation in the actual production. If you overproduce, you are bound to produce a lot of waste. So in terms of the cultural practitioners and, and the practice, it's always that produce that which is enough in a specific environment and share as much as possible. So if I produce spinach, which is enough for me and my family to eat, so it's really, why is for me to share the, and then to destroy the, 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 the uh, and, and waste that spinach? Share with the neighbors who are going to be sharing with me some potatoes. So the, in, in terms of the cultural uh, knowledge and the practice, those are the basic rules that says, understand your environment, work in that environment, but don't uh, destroy that environment. Try to maintain and, 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 and work on a, on, a, on a balance. Because at the end of the day, that environment that you are using, as you said, the, the European communities tend to think of a, a land as a plot between point A and point B, which is owned by me. Anything outside that plot is not mine, I don't care. But if you look at the, 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 the public service system, it says anything outside there, you must pay for it so that somebody must look after it. This is imbued in the Eurocentric uh, approach. The native and the traditional approaches will be, all land belong, belongs to everyone, so don't abuse it. Because we don't have the public service uh, 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 the, uh, uh, tax where the lower class are going to clean our, our, our if I use the right word, shit. So, but, but if you have, a community that says collectively we own this property, we are going to look after it. And uh, when we pass on, the next generation are going to must inherit it better, inherit it, this property better than the, the one we, one that was inherited by the, our four peers. That's the situation in life. Claire. 
Um, Tutuka, you, you mentioned earlier um, the practices of the elders and And you know the the ancient wisdom, um, and it seems that it's much more of a holistic, you know, sort of looking after your bodies, um, and it, it's a much more communal thing. And it seems that we have lost those tenets of living well um, in favour of a more commercial you know, sort of way of living, and. Um, how, how, how do you bring it back to, I mean, I know what you are doing this, but on a bigger scale, how do, how do, how do we, how do we connect with those kind of values? Because I think they're incredibly important. It do, you know, regardless of whether we're Indigenous or, or um, you know. Yes. It, 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 it's, it's the education part. Uh, the, 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 COVID, it's a curse, if I could use, use that uh, curse, it, 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 it brings all problems to the world. But let us look at the other side of COVID. COVID has, uh, has destroyed what is normal in a commercial exploitative environment into a, a, a situation where in, people are back into their families, into their small spaces, to our local communities. Traveling is no longer as at the speed of light or speed of sound. Traveling is back into serious regulations before you enter the aeroplane and, you have, and before you also land uh, on, on, on the other side of, of, of the airport. So it becomes so restrictive for people to move as quick as they used to in, uh, in, 20, in 2017. So 2022, the reality is that education, in terms of, of, of public education, there is a change. There is a moment of the new abnormal environment. That abnormal environment, I, I foresee it as an opportunity for us to venture back into our traditional teachings, produce content, which says, how do you survive this uh, new abnormal? It's, it's abnormal in the sense of that we have been cultured into believing that we have to work and, and work and produce at such kind of a speed. But the reality is that COVID said, said to us, hold on, time, rest, work in your own space, work, try to eliminate a, a group of contact with people that you don't know. And I think that's an advantage for us to say, if we could explore that particular environment and, and start looking at how do we teach in this online systems? How do we do webinars that are teaching this new, this old value system where time was not based on the speed of sound or speed of light, where time was based on what are we doing today? If we can't finish it today, tomorrow is another day. That's right. And it seems, um, you know, anecdotally, we hear that um, so many people are, are a lot more contemplative, you know, that they've, they've come back to their own space and to their own energy. And um, it's, it's actually really quite beautiful, I think. And it, it, it's, it's probably very advantageous for, for you uh, to be able to educate people, particularly young people that, you know, um, what is here and now is the most precious thing. That's it. Mm. That's it. Because it, we may we may cry about the lost the, 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 the lost time. Three years ago, three years ago, we were thinking of something else. Three years after, time is there. Mm. Time time is what is relative to what we are doing. Mm. If we are sitting with a beautiful husband or a boyfriend or a girlfriend, time is very slow. But if you are trying to rush the target, time is very fast. So you have to come down and look at time in terms of the value of what you want to produce. Because time is relative. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think... Mm. 
<laughs> I like your snake, Dave. No, I like not a snake. You. No, you've got a very relaxing voice. That's very calm. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm taking out time. <laughs> I'm taking time to reflect on your words. Yeah. Of wisdom. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. thanks, David. Clear? Yes. Yes. Well, um, you know, actually, it, I'm exactly the same as David. I am just mesmerized by your words. <laughs> and um, what a beautiful gift that is to be able to, to share your thoughts with, with us in the global community, yes, as well yes. as those in your own, you know, um, community on the ground. It, it's, I'm, I'm loving every minute of it. What about you, Pipo? What do you think? So um, I'm lost in the in the planning, um, to be honest, as beautiful as it is. And uh, so <clears throat> I, I take some time. So right? When I'm in a in a public talk that is broadcasted, there's a certain figure, you know, that I represent and I want to represent. And then there is sometimes the moment to break through that fourth wall and just you know be present in the moment so let me give it a shot um sure sure sure. so you mentioned traveling um at the speed of light and you also mentioned um traveling at the speed of sound so um if we could i guess david um, if i could speak for the both of us we would put a note here now and say it says back in eight minutes (laughs) <laughs> and, uh, so back in eight minutes is a is a is a commentary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> back in eight minutes is something that comes from David, and um, yeah, that that just yesterday David explained that it takes about eight minutes for um, light to travel <laughs> from the sun to uh, yes. the earth, and he. Yes. He told me, like he would like to write a symphony and um, and go to the the valley that is close to the to the Grand Canyon and spend time there and write a symphony. Um, inspired wow. by that, so he would write. Wow. Uh, he would put a note, and wrong. And was I wrong? No. David? no. Okay. Um, and he he would write a note on his door that says back in eight minutes, but he would yeah. be back before eight months <laughs> because yeah, yeah, about yeah. the time that it would take him to write. That's relativity. That's, that's relativity. Re- that's absolutely relativity. And I <laughs> I just had to admit myself that my um like I my intellectual capacity is so limited um, when i listen to you and um it's it's a it's a bit embarrassing but uh, because that's you know that's how i grow up with being embarrassed and all those things and now <laughs> that i managed to jump through the fourth wall i'm not embarrassed anymore but that, that's just uh, how i am <laughs> um, so thanks for all those um, beautiful insights i i'm i already looked up the book you spoke about um that is the end the anthem of the decades and i will uh, yeah. have a look at that i'm working on a project that i would like to to do with those lovely um, other artists here on the panel and we were talking about investment and value and property and sharing and um have you heard about gaston bachelard's book the poetry of space where he describes the phenomenal phenomen- phenomenology of uh so it's about phenomenology i still haven't understood what phenomenology is it's really difficult but i love the book and it speaks about the house as a as an as an object that represents something the house so you can have a you know a ground floor on the first floor and you should stop there and it's beautiful whenever i read in it because i get extremely inspired i also proposed those guys on the panel to do a work together that was came up when i was reading 
So I can only tell everybody um, it's really worth still getting a book uh, as much as it's useful to work with um, computers. I think it's awesome what you can do with computers and that we can be here at the moment. And so, but I I was sitting at the river and I was reading this book and I it's had a, like an epiphany. So an epiphany probably you would describe as something that just like comes and you just happen to <laughs> hold your hand and yeah. something flies down and like, oh, it's an apple. Like in that case, it's an apple that's yeah. already peeled, you know. Uh, you can eat it, get some fruit sugar. You prepared that one. <laughs> you just get something and it appears. And yeah. I was thinking about the house um, because I was looking for words that were more suitable than you were speaking about content. And I totally respect that. However, I'm, I'm, I live in a commercialized world and I grew up in yeah. capitalism in, the, in a first yeah. world country. And I've been trying to collect words and I have a big list and I collect words that I want to use because I have a lack of words in my vocabulary. Yes. And yes. so I was thinking about this, the house, and that's why I wanted to tell that the, this book is beautiful. Um, it's, it's called um, Poetics of Space, uh, Gaston Bachelard. Um, it's Poetics of Space, yeah, Gaston Bachelard. Gaston Bachelin, and it's, I think it's complicated, but however, I find it inspiring, although I don't understand yeah. anything. Yeah. It's also yeah. quite interesting. And they have it in English. It's, they it's have it in English. English. I, I will, um, if, I, if I get your address from Ken, I will organize it. Maybe I, it can be sent to you. That, if I, I'll if love I to read it. it. I'll love to read it. Okay. Thank and you. So I have to say that. I would like to make a project with these artists and we said we would like to go to South Africa and now we speak here and everything you say just tell me yes we should go to South Africa however <laughs> German funding says you should invest in Germany so um, yeah. I'm also confronted with these things and then sometimes this is a barrier in my head because if the guidelines say you can't invest in South Africa then this, this is the guidelines. So we constantly need to remind ourselves, I guess, and I'm the very first to consider what we put in our heads, which glasses yeah. we put on, yes. you know, yes. where we sit. And yes. um, it beeps myself up that I have those barriers. Yeah. And, yeah. But, um, I. I, I officially want to put it into the universe that I would like to come to visit you and work there because it's so it speaks of um, a wealth, a cultural wealth that you have. And we want to work on something very important that is rare to find here. So I can go to a production house in Germany. I'm sure we can isolate ourselves for four weeks, have no contact to anyone and be yeah you know like closed Ooh. but um i would much prefer to go and be with somebody um like of your culture and so um i will pass on now yeah. to you or mr Ladden. i just wanted to make this statement it, it was on my mind um i have yeah. to hand in the application tomorrow we want to get the funds and um, and I hope to see you, you know, soon there. <laughs> no, people, people, you are, you are, you are welcome. You are welcome. Uh, but uh, always remember that uh, there is a, a situation that we are in, in currently in South Africa. We are a community that is recovering from a very difficult past. So any opportunity to share our creative abilities, it's, it's, it's really, really, really welcome. I, I appreciate your, 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 your interest. And uh, the only way to learn about any other culture is to visit. Spend, come spend time, visit, uh, uh, have a first experience. Uh, and then uh, 
not not come not not to come as a as a tourist. Most people come as a tourist. People tend to paint it very well, create a very beautiful experience for you as a tourist. Then you 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 are given a reflection of uh, a, a a lifestyle that is not real, as long as you pay for it. But in a situation where we are trying to establish what I call a a a, a, a cultured global citizens. We are at a platform where we are able to share. Yes. You you bring something, we also which helps this community to 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 have professional miners in their culture. Because if 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 people are, are skilled in mining in their culture, professional, they will be able to produce work works that will tour and be used wherever all over the world and be consumed at a professional level all over the world. That's my take. Yeah. Can I just jump in? Very nice. I know that you know we're we're going we're going off um, off script here a little bit, but that reminded me very much when I was seventeen. My father sent me to Japan. I'd studied been studying Japanese at school, yes. and although I loved the language, I was a shocking student. Absolutely, you know. Oh God, any any kind of you know homework I had to do, I would run a mile and he had the wisdom to send me to japan with a group of students other you know youth students yes. um where we stayed in homes in japanese homes yes. and i got such an appreciation of the culture such an appreciation of how a language is meant to be um you know bartered and used and um that I came home and my grades went from, you know, way down here to right up there because all That's of a sudden it. it made sense, you know. And yes. so this whole thing of cultural exchange and really living living in um, a place not as a tourist, and, you know, part of the time I was a tourist there, but um, just absorbing the day-to-day -day life is so um integral to to actually really appreciating somebody's culture somebody's life and how they see the world so i just wanted to share that i think it's can I, can I can i quickly okay. share with you uh, yep ubuntu arts and craft school on facebook yes and or you, can, or you can you can uh, quickly friend me on uh, on Facebook so that you see what, what what we are talking about in terms of cultural exchange. Beautiful the language. The, the language the, the language of the of, of the of the Mai people in in, 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 in in the islands, Pacific Islands, what they draw as a, as a, as they are in, in in as tattoos in their bodies. Yeah. It's the language yeah. that in Africa we are able to read and speak. Beautiful. I have, so I the, have language, a... the language yeah. which is written in your 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 crafted piece there. The necklace. Yes. The necklace is the language that in this in, in, in the continent, the African continent, we are able to read and speak also the language of color and yeah. design. So in creating a global, a culture of global citizens, we are opening up markets for new, new unique products and, and exchange a very different value of exchange between the uh, 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 communities in the world. Then uh, a certain kind of label, jean and a, and a pair of, 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 of sneakers. Because yeah. people, are, people can't live on sneakers and jeans. They are a product that are there. Beautiful. Thank you. So I, I want to, you know, we talked about many, this last question brought up so many aspects. We talked about time and the, the, the way that time is based on what we do and how we do it. You talked about COVID and, and, and this is really, it, it is a reset button. We have an incredible opportunity as a classical dancer every time I had an injury and I took had to take a, a week off 
I knew when I went back, it was a time for me to relearn my exercises without any of my bad habits, to rededicate myself to a refreshed new approach. Um, COVID has brought me, um, uh, if you remember, um, yeah. it was so difficult for you and I to schedule a time to actually talk. And then yeah. that the one day we could, it was during breakfast, and I had meetings right after, and you had meetings before. It was, I mean, it was insane, you know? Yeah. And that is what my schedule is almost always like because I travel constantly yeah. since I was a teenager. Yeah. What COVID has given me, it's been, I've found out what I do when I, don't, when I don't have to be a human doing. When I'm a human being, how do yeah, I yeah. be? I've learned that yeah. from COVID. Yeah. And it, it's yeah. given me a chance to digest and reflect on all of my travels and all of my contacts with people. And it's given me a brand new approach to the curriculum in our school and the syllabus, yeah. um, very much so. And, I, and then in terms of travel and other cultures, um, Margot Fontaine said to me, that the reason that she built a, the Margot Fontaine School in South Africa yes. is because she traveled all over the world and she didn't understand. She said, I know you always return home, but for yeah. human beings, any human being, when you go to Africa, you are returning home yeah. yes. because human beings came from Africa, all of us, all of our ancestors. And um, and so I said, well, that's that's really interesting. You know, I've never been to Africa. And she said, well, yes, you have in the past. But you just don't remember it because it's, yeah. you know, maybe hundreds of years ago. And she said, the, the problem with going to Africa is because once you go home, when you go on back into your life, you always leave your heart at home. Yeah. yeah. And that is absolutely true. And uh, I look forward to coming coming back home again and um and i think that my future travels are going to be far less structured and far less scheduled so that i get to be a human being in those places and not just a human doing and that is a gift from covid that i've learned thank you um, my question is what cultural practices that you do that, that, that you celebrate in your life? What, what are the things that you do? What is the, you know what I mean? Like we just had Halloween here, which is, I don't know Bungani, what it's supposed to be about right now. It's all about candy and costumes and commercial and I don't know, parties and people drinking too much and things yeah. like that. I don't think that's what it was originally for. Um, but, but it's a, we have such a vapid culture in America um maybe you can tell us what some of the cultural practices you do to celebrate life because we can all learn from that there, there, there is a movement there is a movement that uh, i have been uh, recruited to uh, as a contributor uh, i'm not going to use investor now as a contributor uh, it, 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 they, it's called the african calendar hmm. So uh, they are, I'll also share the links uh, on Facebook. What this, what, uh, uh, this thinking group is, try, is trying to do is to revive this, the, the, a calendar of events in, 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 southern, in Southern Hemisphere. And uh, the, the recent uh, festival that uh, was supposed to be uh, conducted but challenged by COVID, was the, the spring equinox for mm -hmm. Southern Hemisphere. So you are talking about uh, the cradle of humankind. The spring equinox in, it connect us to a space in, uh, in, in South Africa where they are, uh, uh, the, sun, the, the ancient sun dials, which are about 75,000 years old, which it, uh, uh, with, with very big stones that were built in that particular space. It's on the eastern part of, 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 of the coast in South Africa, about 300 kilometers north of Devon. So it also has ancient footprints 
one of the footprints is about three, three meters or three meter long footprint, whom the traditional uh, oral history talks of, or oral literature talks of a uh, one legged god. So they are footprints like those similar footprints in South Africa. And also there's only one outside of South Africa, which is in India. So, and they, when you talk to scientists, they tell us that India migrated from the east coast of South Africa in an ancient period as far as India, as an island, floating island, it got stuck there and is still pushing against the, the, the European plateau, pushing up the Himalaya mountain, which is always growing. That's the story we learn from science. But it, the, the oral literature tells us that this one-legged God was a, a solid hemisphere God. So the footprints are there, but it's a matter of now, how do we link that into our, as we are saying, the ancient, South Africa is an ancient, South, South Africa is an ancient world with the relics. Relics are in, foot, are, are in, 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 in stones, relics are in fossils, relics are in the culture and traditions. So it's, it's for us to be able to connect all this into a narrative that says to the world, Whatever phase the world is, you are in, we have gone past that and survive. Learn from these cultures. Because if you are skilled in understanding, as you are saying, you come here and uh, you, Marco says, when she came here, she discovered that she's back home. And there is no other community in the whole world or space in the whole world. With, a, with the relics as old as the ones that we have here, yeah. which are evidence of life. And uh, the only thing that we share with Australia, which tells us that Australia was once uh, here on the east side of South Africa, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the, the stones that, the, the fossils of, of, of a bacteria that is called the blue, blue bacteria, which has a, 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 a code for life, a genetic, a genetic print of life, the first oxygen. One is here in, in South Africa, and the other one is in Australia. That's the only thing. So those connections tell you that we are not as young as people think we are in this continent. So in hemisphere, South Africa is the kangaroo of life. So there are different kinds of genetic uh, imprints or records that are, are still in our, in, our, in our fossil environment. Still to be discovered, that is the only gift that we can share to the world, the culture and the traditions. So as I say, in the calendar, the, 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 the last one, the, the past one in September was supposed to be the equinox. And mm -hmm. we're going to the summer, summer solstice, which celebrates the, 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 the tickling of the earth and the sun energy coming down to the to southern hemisphere for, for summer period. But because we are colonized, we still believe that it's about uh, 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 Christmas, which is uh, still, we still hold the hope that one day we'll wake up on the 25th of uh, December in Southern Hemisphere with the snow, white snow all over. <laughs> <laughs> we still celebrate those. Right. But, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> gradually, gradually, South Africa and, and, uh, and, uh, and Australia are, are starting to share our rugby traditions. <laughs> Maybe through our rugby calendar, which is the summer calendar, we'll start, we still also need to talk about those things. To say, hey, there is no snow coming in here, it's summertime. Let's enjoy summer. <laughs> so we are looking at that calendar uh, into saying, how do we develop this calendar into culture, tradition, sports, and, and allow people to be free-minded in saying that, yes, there is a religion. We are not challenging the religion, but the reality is that it's about the sun, the moon, and you as a, as, a, as a human being in this environment. So how do you adjust yourself? How, what do you eat when the sun is in this position? When the moon is like this, how do you, what do you eat? How do, when do you plant? When do you harvest? When do you, once we, we, we align back ourselves with that natural calendar and fit it into our lifestyle, I think we'll be a better, we're not going to be, to be, to be praying for a, a snow, it, in our yards in, in summer, man, it's not possible. There's no snow anyway in Australia, so it's in South Africa. 
Melbourne. Except in Melbourne. Except in Melbourne. There is there is snow down here. Yes, I can. There, I can there's maybe the snow in Park. Yes. Yeah. Melbourne's a yep. weird place. Very strange. But not in <laughs> December. David, 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 not in December. No. Well, in December. Not in December. I can bet you. Not that. in December. No. no. No, there's actually there's snow in New Guinea actually as well. Yeah, in December. No. Yeah, because they've got a mountain there. If they've got to achieve oh, it. Oh, yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> I just opened up the freezer when I want to experience uh, winter wonderland. Um, yeah. I like, one thing I like about the Africa, um, I've been there about four times. I've had the privilege yeah. to go. And um, I've been mainly to Durban. Um, oh. Swaziland, I went to Swaziland. Um, yes, yes, yes. I've been to Egypt and the other place. Oh, Zimbabwe yeah. a little bit. Um, but uh, there's some. There is a. There is a definite romance, and I mean that in the in the nostalgic way. Um, Africa's got a feel about yes. it. It's got a very distinct feel. Um, I knew. I knew there was a lot of trouble in Durban. There was a lot of violence, um, and we had to be very careful from a social perspective but when you when you strip that away when you just um, look at it um, a plane or look at the the, move, um, the moon over the Indian Ocean or you look at the sun rising there's nothing like an African sunset uh, we have spectacular sunsets in Australia we have spectacular um, dawns over the Pacific Ocean but uh, but an African sunset is, is there's something about that it's um, it's like, in a way, it's almost like the sun meeting the ground. I don't know. And there's an energy. And every day there's an energy. Um, yeah. And and you don't have to be in Africa very long to sense that. And it's it's not like a feeling that you have in Europe and, and North America. I haven't been to South America, but um, all the Pacific Islands, um, I get that feeling. But in Africa, there's there's something about the land and and, and the way the, the, the sun touches of, of an afternoon. Um, and, and I think I think the sun going down is good in Africa because it represents that any 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 good things any troubles for the day finish past and there'll be there'll be a new dawn of a new opportunity and a new hope for the next day. So um, yeah, I hope to see Africa in the near future again as well. Um, and I was also thinking about the comments we're talking about the music, um, a lot of the American. Sorry, Ken. Sorry, <laughs> a lot of the Americanisms coming through um, from a very dominant world power, as you'd expect. But I had it's, it's um, that world was... power is me, so I'm very insulted. <laughs> <laughs> it's very insulted. Okay, I'm pro yeah. I'm giving me my tissues. Um, but the the Africans were taking the jazz music, for instance. They were taking the jazz music in in Durban, and they were they were putting the traditional uh, drumming with it. And um, I think that's what embracing and being part of the world community is about, is, is, is uh, as Ken made a point about Alexander, uh, taking the cultures of various places and, and, and enriching. I think it's very important that there's, a, there's an exchange so that if, if the hip hop's coming through with the street kids from the United States, Los Angeles, et cetera, um, that the kids in, in uh, villages are picking up the traditional instruments and the drumming and all that sorts of things and, 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 and improving, I'll use the word improving their feed of content. Um, because then I think that they are, they, they can't um, lock themselves away from the rest of the world either. They have to be exposed to um, the global um, trends and the global things that are happening, but but at the same time to, to put their own stamp through through their cultural perspective on things is very important. And and after a little while of that, you actually get you get these um, beautiful variations in 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 the in the like hit talk about hip hop or anything. You get you get these variations. You get music not sung in English, perhaps sung in Zulu or sung in in something else. You've got African drumming behind it, and then of course. The um, the people back making the content in the first world countries go, oh my god, that's so exotic. That's something you know different for us as well. It, uh, culture, like language, is well, language is part of culture, 
um, is a, has to be a living thing. It's only the Latin that you know that died a while back that they used in some of the the echelons of churches and things. Um, and historians who use Latin, and it's got its purpose to be remain intact and and not changing. But um, English is changing, as we know. The English that we speak that we're using now um, with Pipo's got a take on it because he's had to learn it as a other language. You, you've had to acquire it as another language. There's um, Americans spell words in very funny ways. Um, the Australians <laughs> bust to touch it as well. But if if I was to go back to if I was to go back to London 500 years ago, I don't think I could even understand the people on the street. Um, <laughs> as, so so the, the the idea of we we don't realise change because we live in yeah. such you know 50 70 etc. lifespan. We don't realise the change. Um, even the notions of what is beautiful. I saw a, I saw a, a picture of a Persian princess who was 13 men that uh, purportedly committed suicide because they couldn't be her partner. And it's not not a, not a person that I would be, um, see on the front of the Vogue yeah. magazine. Our, our whole our whole understanding of, of what we think is beautiful, what we think is important, what we think is um, cool or trendy, it, it just it's just for the now. In, in, it's like the fashion, you know. I wouldn't wear um, 70s fashions today. Walking in a big city, I'd be, I'd be standing out as as, as, a, as a crazy abnormal person. But but it, but back in the 70s, the long hair, the flare pants, the the, the outfits would be, you yeah. know, that's what's in vogue. And I think, I think that um, culture has to be so transformative and always changing and evolving. And that's why I liked what you said that the elders to embrace the technology if they can or, or, or people like yourself because that's part of the change of, of living in the 21st century we're not we're not living in in 1066 you know we do have smartphones we do have video we have everything but at the same time as as people said that there's a power with that we can we can choose to have a narrow content and, and a dominant culture coming through or we can choose to be, be more embracing so yeah just a few comments um yeah. on, on some things that you've said yeah thank you no i I, ap I appreciate david i appreciate and thanks a lot for your comments they are on point and uh you're 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 you're, you're always welcome to visit the continent and i hope that uh, when next time you come this side i will be wherever you are i, will, I know somebody who knows somebody who will know what you're looking for okay probably in the continent but uh, you, your observation about the the, 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 the the impact of the sunset in your in your own uh, 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 space and also your own feeling on how it does it impact you. In there is a a, a a tradition of the sun people. They are called in 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 the English call them the bushmen, but they yeah. are sun. The appropriate name is sun, which is S A N. Wow. The indigenous sun people believe that uh, there are two gods. There is a, a, an evil god who wakes up in the morning, come with the sunset, with the sunrise from east. I think, I think that that evil god comes from Australia, if I if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> because they okay. say they say it comes uh, it comes riding on the sunrise. Only Melbourne, but, Melbourne, yeah, Melbourne. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> they say that that evil god comes on and uh, carrying the sun on 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 his back in the in the in, in the morning is a he god, and then in the evening, the healing god comes carrying the 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 the, 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 the moon, and it's a she god. It's a she god. It's a female god. So she's a healing god. Okay. So that's why the moment of the sunset in Africa. It's a moment, it's a very romantic sexual moment of the two gods, the other one fading in energy and power and wow. all the evils and the craziness of the day fading to be swallowed by the, by the night. So wow. there is that uh, folklore of the sun people who says the evening is for us to pray and to dance and to heal. Yes. So the, the sunset is that moment of connection between these two opposite energies of yin and yang when they connect at that moment. Well, this must definitely... So that's, that's, that's why the sun, that's why the ancient, those ancient uh, sun are the ancient stock of being. 
They are, they are populated all over the world. I, I can see uh, Chinese who are pairing the same, the southern, the red people of, 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 of America are, are having the similar genetic structure to the sun. So the sun teaches us about, about that, that they also have to respect the moment of the sunset and prepare to heal, whatever that was the chaos of the day. That's There's beautiful. a teaching from them. We are talking about music, cultural exchange in terms of music. Uh, please refer to my other, my other group on Facebook that I'm trying to document the story of uh, South African township jazz. It's a different version of jazz, I, the stuff that you observe when you came to Devon. It's a totally different version of jazz, but it, it, when jazz was a, was a record in America as a, an American tradition, it's mm. very interesting that at a similar time in South Africa, we were also producing the similar sound. So we are well, not that far in terms. We are not that far in terms of the connection. Well, the actual, saying, well kind, yeah. the actual. I'm just saying the actual drumming um, and the rhythm aspects of jazz in particular is, is African anyway. That's the African first set yes, was of the, United United of the but, uh, yeah, Yes, if you are talking about the modern kind of version of jazz now, recorded the recorded version and the mm -hmm. public performance of jazz, not just for ritual purpose. So 1900s, 1900, when you, the Americans were doing rap time, we were not far. We were doing similar sounds in South Africa. Um, so all stages of jazz that we have in American tradition, we have a similar chapters. We are not far. Yes. So and in that uh, in that Facebook group, I'm documenting the elders who, without any formal education, any formal education in music, formal education in the management of the arts, art administration, and everything, were able to buy records, American, American records influenced by the American pop culture of the 50s, uh, 60s, 70s. They were able to buy the, their own instruments, learn their own instruments on their own, mimic what Americans do, and then go back to their own cultural community and say, this is our version of sound, not the American way. Wow. And that jazz, kind of jazz is, is touring the world, is competing. They may not, we, we may not have the similar assets like Americans do, but it's committing in that space that we are able to send our own uh, 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 young graduate musicians in this tradition and culture to go and study in the US and, and compete intellectually at that level because they have a, 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 a over 120 years of a similar environment, academic environment. We may lack in terms of record and archiving, but the, that page I'm trying to do that. To say here are the here are the recorded music of these elders. This particular elder has passed on last week. This is the, the, the radiograph of the content that he produced in his life. It's recorded in these LPs uh, and also invite other people who, are, who may have uh, a clips of, of, of old cassettes that can be digitized so that you can then, then uh, create a chapter of that particular condition of that particular elder. In that page, I'm dealing with that material, that content material. To say yeah. they are dying because uh, we have, they are never recorded, but yes. we have some kind of small piece that you can tap in there for future academic work. Can you um, send that link to Langani and he can put it on the Global Sunday and then I'll, I'll look I will, into that. I will, I will do that. All the links I'm talking about, I will do that. And thanks a lot, yeah. thanks a lot. You are welcome to come, we will share music. Thank you. Music is a tradition that needs to be shared. Well, speaking of music, my goodness, it's just been, <laughs> this has been such a rich, amazing conversation. Um, whilst you, you were talking, um, it reminded me of a, now I'm not a heavy metal person, <laughs> yes. um, but um, there, is, there is a heavy metal band in Tibet and they're called The Who. Ah, yes. Um, H-U. And they use traditional instruments and they use traditional oral, um, oh, well, their, their cultural stories to create um, modern music now, you know, yes, and, and yes. they do it in a heavy metal way. And as I said, I'm not really a heavy metal person, but no. I'm fascinated by these guys because they yeah. have brought all of their own traditions into a, a very modern context and 
celebrate their lives and and their way of living um, in a way that um, probably hadn't hadn't been done before. And I just think it's amazing. And this is what you're talking about now, what David's talking about. And I think it's just, and it, it's also a, a totally universal language. You know, yeah. we, we all resonate with music. Um, it's just fascinating. It's just fascinating. And speaking of that, I think we're going to be going to a video now. We're going to be going to Rhythm's Only One video. So enjoy, everybody. And we'll continue with the discussion after the video. Well, welcome back to the Global Sunday. I hope you're enjoying this amazing conversation uh, with our guest who has just disappeared for a moment, but you know, that's what happens. <laughs> Here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, I'm going to hand over to Lungani, who is going to welcome some of the viewers at home. So Lungani, take it away. Yes, yes, uh, Claire Lemon. I, I, I believe I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> if no, I did it, please beat no. me up later. <laughs> beat me up later. Um, yes, yeah, yeah. Welcome back. Uh, I am going to be, um, I don't know, I think, yeah, I think my microphone is on. I don't know. Um, you know, let me know if you can hear me, but if you can, uh, give me a thumbs up. Um, I'm just gonna quickly. Um, say hello to people who are watching. I do not see, um, I don't see the waves of my microphone, but I just hope, I hope that everybody can hear me from home. No, we can hear um, you. Yeah, <laughs> but you're not at home. <laughs> you're not at home, you're in the studio. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, so I have uh, a list of people who are watching at home. Um, yeah, um, I'm gonna send a shout out. And also we have one question um from uh, one of our viewers uh quickly um please i i do apologize if you cannot hear. i do not see the waves of my microphone quickly let me just try and do something quickly there you go there you go i see the waves now okay so what i was saying is um if you did not hear me i'm so sorry um now i'm live you can hear me now you can see me you can hear me you don't just looking at this pretty face you know <laughs> the halloween pretty face now you can hear the pretty voice as well Lungani Guana. actually um yeah i'm just gonna say hello um to t and okay so i'm gonna start with instagram uh because we are live on instagram so uh hello to uh, t underscore uh grayton shout out to you thank you so much for tuning in um uh, underscore Voody, underscore Voody. Uh, shout out to you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, Lungani one two e. You got my name. You are a thief. You stole my name. Shout out to you. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> um, shout out to Vulenda underscore Camila. Um, thank you so much for watching on Instagram. Uh, shout out to um. Mrizi underscore SA, shout out to you. Uh, shout out to Masengwa9. Shout out to J underscore money underscore DE underscore DJ. Thank you so much for tuning in. Shout out to Zuziwe, shout out to you. Uh, shout out to September Cutie, shout out to you. Uh, shout out to Atule Tele. Atule Tele used to be my classmate like uh, 10 years ago in high school. Shout out to you, my brother. And now moving on to Facebook. Uh, shout out to Mama Mia, our regular viewer. Shout out to you, my dear. You are so beautiful and amazing. Shout out to RT. Um, he was one of our guests a, a few months ago or a year ago. Uh, shout out to you, my brother. Shout out to Eugene Skiff. Oh, shout out to you, my brother. And I saw you had uh, a lot of comments. Um, and one of the comments was, um, um, Anthem of uh, Decades is a book that everyone needs to read oh shout out to you my brother on facebook uh, uh yes and shout out to don gumede and don gumede is saying welcome mr Tutugo. south africa is 
looking shout out to you uh shout out to luno market who had a question saying um i think uh, one of um our uh, my co-host uh, can you please note this down or just memorize this uh, it's a question from luno market and he is saying or she is saying um what can a young person do to better the future or the lives of um you know africans or of themselves um yeah please note that down uh, it goes to mr kuzwayo and then also uh quickly i just want to say um we uh, we have one of our previous guests lasandra um who is nominated for grammy awards and we should support her please please i know you guys you guys are so amazing you are going to support her please support her by posting i am going to share the post on my facebook account and also the global sunday um facebook account take that share that so you can vote for her and um you know um i, I think this would be a really huge deal for south africa i mean she's young and uh, she's very talented and uh yeah she needs our support as, as south africans as the global sunday also but i'm gonna toss it over to claire or people tuffel to ask uh some questions i know they are dying They're like hey come on you're making it your show this is this is our show this is our show so <laughs> yeah i'm gonna toss it over to people tuffel to ask the questions uh from me lungani kwala but chocolate kid leo umzulu wase america over to you mr people tavel thank you lungani and thanks for having me on the show um it's a great pleasure and to be in touch with people from all over the world so tutuku more questions are you still there are you still ready you still can take some questions uh all right i'm so, pay, I, the, this is my life this is the work i do i speak a lot okay so time time is time is very is very is very relative so i'm doing something that i'm enjoying don't worry i'm here well uh, who asked what could what can a young person brilliant idea. What, what 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 can um, what, what better can a young person do yes. in changing the life of africans so, are, are you still there? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm saying we can link that to that question, Gaga Lulu, when she asked, when Lulu asked, uh, what what uh, could be the role of the of the young person in uh, in uh, in in changing the African and make the life of the Africa better or Africans better? Yes, we are potential. Please note, we are potential ancestors, as we have we are still in a, in this room of the living. So as the as 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 we are elders in the culture and the, and our community, the ultimate objective is, is to say, when you leave Earth, you have contributed and left a legacy for the next generation to pick it up invest in it develop it and share it for the next generation so as 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 a, it's a commitment that this thing cannot be privately owned the, in, the intellectual property of, that is produced in culture cannot be privately owned but i know that the first world believe that intellectual property is based on who innovated but the reality is that you may be the one who has a spark, but you need other people to enrich the spark into a product. So that's the beauty about, about the, 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 the indigenous community and the indigenous cultures, which says, thou shall share. Thou shall inherit, thou shall innovate, thou shall encourage others to contribute in a sharing moment and then give it to the next generation. So that's the role of the elders you know, in, in our culture, to say, how do we create, what I would call it, an, a, like a, an, an intellectual bank of ideas and innovations. But to stop this, this uh, cultural piracy of, uh, of, of uh, stealing, because we have got a pet, you steal in the culture and exploit the culture 
away from control mechanisms. Cultural ex exploitation in terms of trade is, is very important, but that cultural exploitation needs to have some control mechanisms to say, how do you, how do you regulate the cultural exploitation? Because if, 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 if I export it, exploit it for my own benefit, I am also depriving the, the next generation to inherit something of value. But if I am engaging with you in German with an objective of cultural exchange and the added value that is going to benefit both of us, the next generation, generations after me are going to look at me as a, an ancestor that has made a contribution in the development of a culture. So there's a value in being an ancestor in that particular space. There's a value of being an, an elder who's aware, who's also keen to keep a legacy past his life on earth. That will be, that will be my submission. David. Yes. Um, we often take the, uh, the spark that you said, and we innovate and then, we, we like that property thing. It's 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 like we have to um, we have to um, own it. And what you're saying is that take the spark, but but appreciate that um, a, a whole group of people, perhaps or most of the time, to make something um, very useful for the future, is involved with that. And we. It's what I thought at the beginning when we were describing the South African Indigenous peoples of Australia, and just that they, they, they share. They got this notion of something good for the for the village is good for everybody. Share it. Um, we've got this um, convoluted kind of an idea from the first world. Uh, oh, I've got an idea. Let's, as you said, let's let's be on top of everybody else. Let's exploit it. Let's let's have the money for ourselves and let's have the credit. But um, your 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 wisdom to the people is uh, take your idea and 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 give it. It's like um, Tesla um, never put patents on his famous um, some of his famous inventions. He could have he could have made yeah. a lot of money um, and, and kept it all for himself and and uncharacteristically for where he was living uh, in the industrial United States. He said, "No, I don't want to put a patent on this." You know, it's technology. I, I give it to the world. He did that, and and his inventions were brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So um, it's just amazing um, that 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 idea. But how do we change that? How do we get people to um, to to be less selfish and more collaborative? How do we do yeah, this? The, the, yeah, the how part talks to COVID, 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 COVID vaccine says to us now, it's no longer about the intellectual property. Yeah. It's no longer about yeah. a, 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 a pharmaceutical companies owning the intellectual property and the trade rights. It's about sharing. If, yeah. you, if, you, if, if, you, if you have it, you want to use it on, on your own, but uh, people from here are going to visit those who are not exposed to the vaccine. And those who are not exposed to the vaccine are going to come and immigrate to your side. If you have your vaccine, you are saying you know, it's your property. If you don't afford, you can't use it. The, 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 the infection is going to travel, irrespective of share it. If you share it within a, 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 a certain period of time, uh, if you share the vaccine within a certain period of time, the whole world will be a safer place to travel. Mm -hmm. That's a reality we have faced with. Yes. And uh, if you say the how about nature, has its own course and nature is very reliable. The sun rises at the right time and it sets at the right time. The moon rises on the right time and it sets at the right time. It's only us with our greed, which 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 makes time we try try by all means to trade around time. But the reality is that nature keeps time. Yes. So you talked about you talk you talked about music and uh, the role of music and Claire talked about the, the, the cultural communities using the, 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 the traditional instrument or the modern instrument, but contributing to world music. My philosophy is very simple. I say music is a universal language. It has seven principles that you call, that uh, the first world call it notes. 
Those are seven principles. There are only seven. So from the seven principles, you can write so many scores. You can, you can, you can do anything from that seven principles, seven notes. And there are only 12. If now if you want to expand these notes into, uh, 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 into scales, you're opening up opportunities. Because the European community culture will say that we have 12 scales or seven notes and what. But the jazz community will say you will have seen certain other chords that can still be played there, which open up these scales into fifth, seventh, major, whatever that language that you talk about. But if you if 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 for us to speak in a language that we'll be able to understand each other, that language, that music provides that principle to say from this principle of seven, how can it work around here in harmony and in tune? So I don't think that the world needs us to, to stick to the traditions as they were, as you were saying, the English in Britain in, in the times of Shakespeare and the English now. Far different, but if you focus on the on the principles and the notes the structure, and the, and the work in harmony and in sync here, you can produce something wonderful. For example, Zulu musicians who play a concertina, you know the concertina, mm -hmm. yeah, accordion. They call it an accordion. Yeah, an sure. accordion. Yeah, they they prefer. They prefer to import the, 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 the accordions from China, the paper one. But when, they, when, 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 when it reaches Devon, that concertina, it's, uh, it's, it's broken into pieces and retuned to sing in its Zulu harmony. OK. So, so those are cultural traditions that we need to, to, to share with the world. And you'll yeah. find that there is a similar experience even in, in, in Australia, in Germany, in Russia, in America, North or South. The whole world is in, busy innovating something new. The digital do that we are playing there, when it reaches this side, it has been adapted to something else. It's here, we have it, the sound of the, yeah. the, the digital do. But they are played in different uh, 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 innovations. Yeah, with orchestras. I've got a... I, um, I want to ask this question because the panel was waiting as well. Um, when man and nature bind together in culture, community and civilization, we see the strongest and longest cultures surviving. So how can we reintroduce the closeness of humans with nature in today's world? And I think what it's saying is that in, in, in the cities of the first world, uh, people lose touch, they, they, the milk for them is something out of a bottle, a plastic bottle that they get from the supermarket. Oh, it's yes, yes. no, no connection with, with the cow, no connection with the, the life forces of the cow and, 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 and how that works. Just just totally disconnected all the time. I, I, I always, I always uh, uh, cry and, uh, and lament a moment in South Africa where a lot of us could not afford to have electricity because it meant that our the kind of food that was at home was always fresh because there was no a, 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 a freezer to, to freeze to, to overstock meat and other products dairy products so everything that we could eat was the stuff that was available as uh, fresh as possible and as less as possible. So you, you hear people saying meat was a delicacy for Sundays. So the whole, the whole of, of the week, people were eating fresh vegetables and a variety of meals, of meats, of meals around the fresh vegetables. Then the Sunday will be a Sunday dinner or Sunday lunch with a, a, a buffet of other meats and, and the variety of meats. So in a community like that, for sure, a lot of cardiac infections and, and the sickness is very low. But once electricity was accessible, a big commercial freezers were now in our, in our kitchens. Uh, our lifestyle went poof. So the connection with the, mobile, with the, with the modern city 
and nature is that we need now now and then to 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 check the technology in our in our in our kitchen how do we store food how often do we clean our 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 our, our storage systems and the, and the, and the, what is fresh how do we define fresh is something that was frozen 9 months ago quick frozen 9 months ago a uh, uh, good for human consumption if meat is frozen, like uh, we are eating a lot of imported meat in South Africa, coming from your side, most of lamb and 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 mutton come from your side. You can't afford to produce much in this side. So when it comes, it's about six months to nine months old in a freezer. Is that good for human consumption? So we still need, we need a lot of 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 of, of effort in looking at how far can we expand our local consumption? How can we be so narrow? How can we narrow ourselves in the cities, uh, creating boundaries of producing fresh produce food within certain radius of kilometers? Because if, if the city, the big city can, can start to have a policy that says, fresh produce is produced within 400 kilometers radius of the, of the major city. Those communities who are in the periphery, periphery will be richer. They will provide an alternative lifestyle for the for the urbanized community. But yeah. currently, the cities are only depending on the port, on, on their on their big ports, importing food from all over the world, and uh, it's frozen food that comes from as far as wherever you can think of. So those are, those, we need to start looking. Culture talks about all of those things: your lifestyle, your 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 your, your, your consumption, the access to nature. Not only nature for, for worship and spirituality, but in nature that sustains you to have a living lifestyle and you live. I would say the ultimate objective of life is to live. Because one day you're going to die. So don't worry about the day you die. Worry about the tomorrow and the other day and the other day of living. Thank you, Claire. Claire. Wow. Um, I, funnily enough, um, as you were talking about that and, you know, the, the whole cycle of um, frozen food coming in and electricity and all of that, which, you know, supposedly makes life easier. Um, I guess it sort of, um, it reminded me of what went on for a lot of people during COVID in that um, people started getting um, deliveries, you know, home deliveries, takeaway or, you know, Uber Eats, um, all of those kind of things, which, you know, stopped people from appreciating what, what they actually have in their fridge or what they are growing in their garden, what they, what they can access locally down at the, the local greengrocer um, and, you know, just make a meal um, that hasn't been made by somebody else and delivered in a taxi. And, you know, it's the whole knock-on effect um, creates this world where it's false. It seems to be very false. You know, we, we, we don't go back to the source. We don't go back to, you know, making a big pot of soup or, you know, and, and sharing it with the family, with the neighbours or whatever. So um, it's probably a good time to just get that message out that, you know, what we have in our hand can be can be created, like, you know, you've got an egg and you've got some herbs, make an omelette. Um, we don't need, we don't need all the, you know, extra spices and all the, all of those kind of things to make something wholesome and hearty that nourishes us. I think we've forgotten about that fact that the basic thing of human life is to be nourished and whether it's with love or empathy or, um, culture or whatever or food it is that we must nourish our bodies before we can offer and serve anybody else so um yeah and i guess it, i guess that ties into my question um which is the next one which those those people who forget history and forget what went on in the past and forget how people lived simply um if they forget history, they're destined to relive it in a way that is not always um, complementary to, you know, the way they want to live life. So what, what, what would you say, uh, to, to, to 
that are some specific lessons that we're collectively kind of relearning today. And it may, may be, you know, in the context of COVID or it may be, you know, in the last 10, 20, 30 years. What, what are some lessons that we're, we're relearning? Oh, okay. Well, before, actually, before you answer that, we have to take a break. <laughs> Thank you. Take Thank you, Claire. <laughs> so let's go to the break. I got a little something Say hello to my little friend Composure is so cold Best so yeah. icy I'm so cold I got composure So cold Keep my composure I'm so cold I got composure I don't panic I keep my composure I'm so cold Best surf icy I don't panic I keep my composure I'm so cold Composure, babe. Composure. I just keep it so clean. Keep it so clean. And you know me well. Know me well. I don't mess with no lames. Looking no straight to the face. I don't fuck with the fakes. I just come with the flicks. Ain't no time for it. It's, you don't know me well. Know me well. All the bitches the same. All the bitches the same. Got a rise to shine. They can take it from me. No. I'm a grind. Get what's mine. They can make it from me. Rainy days Don't mean nothing to me I got a little something Say hello to my little friend Composure is so cold Best so icy I'm so cold I got composure So cold Icy I'm so cold I say I'm icy and yeah, I'm frozen I'm shit influential You know that I'm chosen Big drip in my pockets rolling Don't call on my phone if it ain't about profits Tito on my side and we can chase all these diamonds The music so impeccable, the sound is really timeless Don't come my way if it ain't about the dollars She a conniver, I say she a liar It's rainy days Don't mean nothing to me I got a little something Say hello to my little friend Composure is so cold Best yeah. so icy, I'm so cold I got composure, so cold Keep my composure, icy. I'm so cold Never that the cell, man, a villain gets so chill It's never ending well when you go against the real R-E-double-G-I-E-M-C is gonna spell Magic on the verse, yo, you heard it first I'm Cheyenne, Wendy's, I'm sheen some water for your thirst From the OG1 Got your sati They want a nigga done, so it's never ever me. Got too much juice and the flavor be you. Rainy days, don't mean nothing to me. I got a little something. Say hello to my little friend. Composure is so cold. Best so icy. I'm so cold. I got composure. So cold. Eat my composure. I'm so cold. I got composure. I don't panic, I keep my composure. I'm so cold, best surf icy. I don't panic, I keep my composure. I'm so cold. Welcome back. Well, we seem to be rabbiting on for so long. This is such an amazing conversation um, uh, that, you know, time is going faster than we thought, speaking of time before. Um, so I'm just going to repeat my question to Tuko. And um, so I was saying that those who forget history are destined to relive it. Um, so what are some specific lessons that we are currently relearning today in your view? Yeah, yes, that, that's true. If, if you are not aware, you are bound to repeat the same mistake, those of... of those before you have gone past the same stage before you. Uh, maybe, maybe I would want, I want to refer to to your, your 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 example of how can you use the local available uh, 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 resources. Simple as you said, spice. Uh, 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 instead of spices, you can use uh, in 
helps in your garden and make something nice. But the reality is that uh, the Dutch East India Company in 1652 discovered South Africa on their way to India to buy spices. So it, it, the, the reality is that uh, uh, some other discoveries are commercial and they happen by chance. Others are, are man-made. So the reality in, in, in this situation is that uh, history sits with a uh, uh, history sits with, with with notes that can help us to, to 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 interpret and focus our future, interpret the moment and focus our future. So the, and and that's why I was saying we need to deal with it as a as a collective property which talks to heritage, not don't isolate it with heritage. It cultural, it, it has a cultural value, so it can, it must be preserved and be developed to be inherited by the next next generation. So that's why you call it tradition. Um, you know, it 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 has been incredible to to speak with you today, um, and I'm so glad that we have this format because when we're in the same city, we're both so busy all the time. I want to make sure next time I come home to Africa that things are structured differently. Um, but I think one of the things that I have really, really taken away from this, you know, you're talking about what we learn in the moment, um, is, is just how you have to be present. You have to be present, you have to bring what you bring, you have to take in what's going on, you have to remember, and then you have to give value to that and celebrate it. And, you know, that's the celebration of life that are is the base of our traditions and it's through those traditions that we do pass on knowledge um you know you, you said earlier something about the um that the africans are recovering from a very difficult past that is probably the biggest understatement in the history of speaking um and um and the thing is yet yeah, what i see when i go there singing dancing, laughing, getting together. If they have one cabbage and one, and one loaf of bread, it can feed five people for two days because there's so much invention and create. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's really incredible. But um, I, I just wanted to, to say that um, because I know, uh, I, I believe we're going to be doing a part two um, and hopefully a part five and a part 10 and a part 22. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, I just, you know, in terms of, you, you don't just learn from the past, you have to learn from your present. You have to record what's happening and remember it and understand it. Um, and I tapped my table and it moved my, my camera. Um, okay, so I will go to where the camera is now. No, nope, it's over there. Anyway, um, I just, you know, I, I'm, I'm so, so in and just enthralled by this today and it's funny you know we did so many things together and i feel like today i'm really getting to know you almost like for the first time um wow. in spite of our history because you know we were we were on program and we had to do and do and do you know what i mean and, and wow just sitting and talking is so revealing it's incredible and um uh, people we haven't heard from you in a long time um, yeah, yeah. I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Germany no. has lost an hour this today, so I'm a bit behind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just catching up. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the very precious thing that I'm thinking of is to give time to things and it's not so much in fashion but so um, thanks for giving your time and for sharing today and since we will have a part infinite part um, I'm just not so good at saying goodbye so I will already say goodbye here before my dear colleagues uh, put it to an end 
and I'm taking your invitation very serious. Um, you know, that's how we Germans are, you know, just yeah. like, okay, you know, like, that's, I will be there on your doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks, yes. Remember, remember the opening line of uh, the anthem of the decades, and then time was born. I hope that this moment, this moment, uh, it is just two seconds in our life, this moment, we are, we are able to create time. And you, your panel helped, the, the whole panel helped me to remember. Thanks, thanks a lot, I appreciate. So I believe we're over to you, Claire. I thought it was David was going to speak and just say some final words before I. <laughs> I'll jump in. Like, yeah, like people, I'll say my um, thanks for the session. I, I hope there is a follow-up session because some of the interviews that we do, are, as I said, they're more entertainment-based. They're more um, specifically detailed about events and, and achievements. But this, this particular interview is a bit different because you're, you're um, discussing things like culture and, and tradition and, and things that are, are, are very immense and, and therefore um, can't be just glossed over. We, we, we can't be superficial when we say that um, culture is important. We have to actually unpack that. Um, so I do thank you for that. Um, just a, an anecdotal on time. Someone once said to a, a person that was in their hundreds, 102 or something, how come you had longevity and the person said, well, everybody um, celebrates a birthday and it's in a way it's, it's, a, it's a celebration of your life from that point of view, but it, it's also um, you're telling yourself that you're another year older, you're telling yourself that you're 79, you're telling yourself that you're 84. Yeah. He says, uh, I don't do that. I don't do that. I said, um, I'm here for whenever, the, whenever the, my time runs out, but until then I'm a young person in my mind. So um, we tell ourselves what you were talking about, time was born. We, we tell ourselves that there are 12 hours and 365 and a quarter days a year. And we remind ourselves that we've got X amount of time. Time is limited. We're running out of time. And just as um, Longani suggested, our producer, that you know we, we, we allotted some time to this little session, but we need more time. So, and, and time yeah. is actually infinite. It's not limited, it is infinite if we choose it. So I'll just leave on that note. I, I, I look forward to um, your your Facebook links about the music that you're doing. And I also look forward to an opportunity in the coming time um, to visit South Africa and, and, and meet with you. Thank you. Thanks for that. I also hope to, to visit uh, your, oh, yeah. your world space also. <laughs> To get an invitation to talk and see what uh, the other I'm, cultures I'm, are doing. I'm very remiss. I, I always invite my artists to come to Australia, and I've stopped doing that um, in the last couple of sessions. <laughs> you are quite correct. Um, it's a, we, we'd love it. your 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 wisdom would be so valued by our elders here um, and 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 the other people who are non-indigenous as well. So yes, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, David. And I'd like to extend that invitation to to Australia too and down to Melbourne because, um, yes, I think these conversations need to be ha had wherever we are in the world. And this has been such a rich and enlightening um, discussion between everybody. And I, I thank you so much. It's been absolutely wonderful. I look forward to part two. I'm sorry that we have run out of time. Um, on this particular program today. Yes. Um, thank you everybody who has tuned in to the Global Sunday. It's been a, a fantastic day, evening, whatever, in your world, wherever you are in the world, um, whatever time it is there. Um, and we look forward to part two. And as Ken said, perhaps part five, part 10, whatever. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you. So, um, so we, we, we have, a, we have a, a tradition here at the show is to give a last word. Um, everybody gets a minute to say their last word. What, what I'm going to say is I first heard of you um, when I was uh, in the 11th grade, um, and this was before you were born, um, and uh, because we were studying Plato's Republic 
and he talked about meeting a philosopher king. And that I think is the first time I heard about Nduko. You are my friend, my brother, you are a philosopher king. Um, this has been wonderful to spend time with you. Thank you. And so uh, we pass the last word. Usually you get to give your last word last, um, but um, why right. don't we go from there to Pipo, say. <laughs> Okay, um, let's go and have a look at the sunset because um, it sounds like a good point to connect to the two different parts. And I would say, <clears throat> I also uh, want to read more about that. Uh, what you just mentioned is the first time I hear that uh, the sunrise is, you know, coming on the on the backpack and <laughs> that's the bad part and later you're gonna meet the good part thank you so much and i will pass on david. the next person is either david or claire i think david first, david uh, first. I, I really can't add to what i said i i i've said my goodbye but i this one little opportunity thank you thank you so much for your time it's been a very big pleasure on my part thank you the Duco, do you have last words before Claire ends our show? Yeah, yeah, it 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 finishes Zulu. We say Sia Bonga, which is uh started in two words. It's Siaba and Onga. Siaba means we are I commit to share Onga that which must be preserved. So it's not thank you. So I commit, Siabonga. I commit that I'm going to share that which is worth to be preserved from this session. Ah, oh, beautiful, Siabonga. <laughs> I look yeah, forward to more. I look forward to more. Um, I just want to say a shout out to um, the Art of Sunday with Brenda. Thank you for tuning in and um, hope everybody has a great week ahead of them. And we look forward to the next Global Sunday. So bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. We shall see each other again. Seven eight, seven eight. Girl, too long, I gotta meditate. You think it all, girl, you're hella brave. You do it all and you ain't getting paid. Slow down, girl, slow down. Slow down, you gotta slow down. If you can call it, let me know now. We hate it when it's time to go down. Slow down, girl, slow down. Slow down, you gotta slow down. If you can call it, let me know now. We hate it when it's time to go down. Yeah. We got your bond. By the trouble on the day. Don't talk, girl. I don't wanna hear what you gon' say. The only time your mind will move is when it's time to play. Put your tongue down my body, up until my brain. I know you're extra, I don't really like it when it's playing. Girl, lately I've been busy. I saw you find it hard to see me. The boys tryna get on TV. Poverty's a prison, I'm tryna free me. I'm not a type of grabbing free piece. I'm tryna put you on a yard and feel the sea breeze. I'm tryna book you a resort for like three weeks. And blow my money till I day I'm six feet. I could touch the sky for you. I think I'd lie for you. Jordan sick cry for you. Baby, I could kill a guy for you. Hey. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Girl, too long, I gotta meditate. You think it all, girl, you're hella brave. You do it all and you ain't getting paid. Slow down, girl, slow down, slow down, you gotta slow down, if you can call it, let me know now, we hate it when it's time to go down, slow down, girl, slow down, slow down, you gotta slow down, if you can call it, let me know now, we hate it when it's time to go down.
Touch the sky for you. Sky for I think God lie for you. Joe, they see cry for you. Baby, I could kill a guy for you. Hey. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Girl, too long, I gotta meditate. You think it all, girl, you're hella brave. You do it all and you ain't getting paid. Slow down, girl, slow down. Slow down, you gotta slow down. If you can call it, let me know now. We hate it when it's time to go down. Slow down, girl, slow down, slow down, you gotta slow down, and you can call it, let me know 